take it away from him. And it's a magnificent finish on the stretch. It's in. Too much for Taib. Light poles. Sheer delight. And that's their ticket to Wembley. Well and truly booked. We're live at Wembley for a very special Women's FA Cup final between the WSL big guns Chelsea and Arsenal. Special because the FA today is commemorating 50 years of the Women's FA Cup. And these are the names of the winning captains down the years, many of whom will be here today as special guests of the FA. And I reckon they're going to see an absolute blockbuster. So grab your front row seat and enjoy the show. If all the world's a stage, then Wembley, well, that's the biggest stage of them all, isn't it? Goes for goal and scores! It was a super goal! Rocketed it in by Jesse Lingard! Kirby onto a left foot, parts it brilliantly! Evans is going to hit it, and hit it beautifully! Which that way's in there to win it! A new script is set to be written in sport's greatest theatre, the Women's FA Cup Final. An all-star cast waits in the wings as the crowds gather in the stalls for the battle between two teams, both alike in history. In London, where we lay our scene, the capital's north against its west. Arsenal. Promising from Arsenal, it's made. And the shot driven in is a fabulous one. And Cross City rivals, Chelsea. And Sam Kerr puts this cup tie to bed. Cuthbert, and it's in. These women aren't merely players. They are the best of the best. Auditions pass with flying colours. Arsenal's bid for a 15 Women's FA Cup continues. Chelsea are on their way to Wembley once again under Emma Hayes. It's the final curtain call. Once more onto the breach. On the biggest stage of them all. Wow, what a fitting start to our cup final coverage at Wembley in this 50th anniversary year. And thank you to Rashenda Sandal of Line of Duty and to Shakespeare's Globe Theatre in London for hosting us on your iconic stage. 14-time FA Cup winners Arsenal arrive here today in search of a trophy. They haven't won since 2016. They currently sit top of the WSL table and remain unbeaten this season in the league. Emma Hayes' Chelsea have won the FA Cup twice previously and knocked out last year's winners Manchester City in the semi-finals on their way to get here. And their last FA Cup win was incidentally against Arsenal back in 2018. Victory today would see Chelsea clinch a 2021 domestic treble with this final concluding last season's FA Cup competition. We are expecting close to 50,000 here at Wembley today for this Vitality Women's FA Cup final between Arsenal and Chelsea. And kickoff is in about 25 minutes time. The atmosphere is building nicely and alongside me, two women who, quite frankly, we need a very large cabinet to fill with trophies from their illustrious careers. Alex Scott, seven-time FA Cup winner, and she did that alongside the last time, Farrah Williams, back in 2016. You two have so much to offer today. Of course, Farrah did just play for Arsenal. We know her from Reading, Everton and Chelsea. We'll dip into those memories as well, but we will do that very, very shortly because let's, first of all, have a little look at what you've got to look forward to this afternoon. And of course, on course for a 10th major trophy, Emma Hayes is giving us the lowdown on her coaching philosophy. Meet the marvellous, Beth sits down with Arsenal legend Kelly Smith. And we hear from the players who are trailblazers in the evolution of the women's game. And the FA is doing so much to commemorate this 50th anniversary. And Ella Henderson out there entertaining the crowds who came in a little bit earlier. She's still out there. She'll be singing the anthem as well. She's been a great supporter of women's football and making beautiful music, as she always does, and giving everyone a real lift today on this 
slightly glittery, drizzly afternoon, as you'd expect, I suppose, from a December final. But I'm going to take you two for a little trip down the archives, a trip down memory lane. We don't have to go too far back, but that final in 2016 was just the second to be played at Wembley. Did it feel, Alex, like that was a moment in the women's game, moving this final to Wembley? Most definitely. I think me and Farah were fortunate enough to play here for Team GB for England. But when you get to play here in your club colours, it was what dreams are made of. Yes, that's cliche, but you just dreamt of that moment. And to see the game progress to that level is just special. And yes, I cried like a baby. I'm not embarrassed to admit that because it meant so much. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, having won the FA Cup prior to coming to Wembley, it just didn't feel real. So to actually, you know, come to Wembley and walk the stairs and lift the FA Cup, I think that is what, as a little girl, I actually dreamed of. So I can openly say, as a girl, I dreamed of playing at Wembley in an FA Cup final, and I managed to do it and win it with Arsenal. Well, let's have a look at you as a little girl, because that little girl might have had slightly different dreams, maybe, because <laughs> she started out as a blue. Look at her. Butter <laughs> wouldn't melt Still in her Still not smiling mouth. in those photos. <laughs> Yeah, and look, I didn't have much joy coming to watch Chelsea men here as a young, you know, a young supporter. And again, obviously, I, I, we beat Chelsea in, in the cup final in 2016. So again, for Chelsea, it wasn't a, a good memory here in those moments. Do you know what those pictures as well are kind of <laughs> reminders of? I mean, there's so many things today that would be reminded how far the women's games come. I think you're wearing men's cut kits there as well, it aren't you? Used to be hand-me-downs. Yeah. That's how far the women's game has progressed. That we used to get hand-me-downs from first team men's games. I said blockbuster in the build-up just a little bit earlier on, but it does feel like that with these two, the top two in the WSL, Barra, and playing so well, such exciting brands of football. Yeah, and that's what's so exciting. We generally have the best two female teams currently in the WSL going head-to-head -head in an FA Cup final at Wembley. You know, we're expecting 50,000 fans, so for me, it's a fantastic game, and for the neutral, it's going to be fantastic. I'm not sure how me and Alex are going to sit next to each other watching this. It's not neutral today. <laughs> no, and your coat is saying that as well. And I can tell you her socks are also saying that. She's actually wearing football, Arsenal football socks. To keep, to keep yourself warm, with me. To keep yourself warm yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, is it possible to pick a, a kind of an underdog out of these two or one that's just edging it? Because you've got the history of Arsenal. We had a little kind of chat about this earlier and you were saying, well, yeah, that history was kind of, you know, the old, the old game almost, the modern incarnation, it doesn't count. I think today, because you have two teams, yes, first and second, what, top scorers, Chelsea, Arsenal just behind them with one goal. Today it's going to all come down to the mindset of the players, what big players do show up. And there's so many interesting matchups all over the pitch today. What team wins the most battles will go on to win the game today? Very, very good indeed. OK, well, Emma Hayes has won nine major trophies in nine years with Chelsea. And Kelly Summers has been to have a chat with her to find out a little bit before a bit more about the makings and the mind of this charismatic manager. If I to ask you to describe your management style or with three words, what words would you Oh, my goodness. I think demanding is one of them. Relax! I'll do everything! But I care deeply. I do. I care deeply about everybody and I'm evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Let's go back to the very beginning of your journey then. Did you always know you wanted to coach? No, I didn't think this is what I was going to do. I just knew that I love football and I've not been able to shake it, but I've realised I enjoy teaching and coaching a sport that is my passion. Now I look back and think it's ridiculous to think I would have done anything else. <laughs> Emma Hayes, so much success already. This just could be the beginning of something. We've also been out to America and coached out there. We know how wonderful the US kind of setup is when it comes to women's football. How much did that shape you as well? Massively. I did lots of different jobs and trialled, failed succeeded but I got the exposures I think that by the time I came home I didn't realize the grounding I'd had I think I've always been really confident because of it because my formative years were spent in a place where they embraced women in football the character in this squad is unbelievable it shows that we've developed as a team we've got more to come we've got more to come what kind of former Chelsea in at the moment in your eyes even when you've won comfortably you're always pointing out things that can be improved upon to be at the top, you have to think like that and you have to behave like that. And I've experienced not winning. For me, that's when you have to reflect the most. I think you have to analyse your performances with so much quality when you win. 
and I just look forward to the next block of games because I don't think our team is anywhere near the peak of its power. That is a fabulous goal! And I think we've got another level to show everyone. I can hear you glowing with pride about this squad. Is this the best squad you've had here? Yeah, absolutely. I step out to training every day and I'll turn to my assistant and I'll be like, we were even better today. And I, and, and, and I know the players feel it. If we can keep everybody singing the same tune, there's no doubt the experience we've acquired, we will continue to find another level. Haven't made them pay yet. Might do here! Of course, FA Cup is the focus today. You've already won the WSL. This could be part of a domestic treble, given the way the league has kind of been in this last season's competition. What would it mean to you to lift this trophy? I just know that I go to work every day, not just to win, but to grow our game. And hopefully millions of people are tuning in to watch two amazing teams, two great ambassadors for the sport. Of course, I want to win, but I know that I'm part of something much bigger than that. And I'm just looking forward to our group of players representing their badge and competing in what is the best day in the football calendar. Alex, you worked with Emma Hayes at Arsenal where she attributes a lot of her learnings to big hackers as yeah. well. But it's clear from, from what she said there as well, she's, she's learnt the hard way in lots of ways, but also away from the glare of the WSL. Yeah, I think a big growth and development in Emma Hayes' career was when she was in America, to be honest. I think when you think about the squad that she had over there working with some of the best players and failed and actually when you look at yourself as an individual some of your biggest learnings in life are from those failures. I remember as all the games that I lost thinking how can I improve, how can I do better and Emma Hayes came back and built this Chelsea team from those lessons into what it is today and I have the utmost respect for everything that Emma has done for the women's game. She demands a lot doesn't she from her players and she demands growth and you can see there's a growth mindset there. You are like a a lot of people, you know, well, actually, a lot of people seem to have been coached by it. Farrow, you were, but like a lot of people, she kind of came to your attention last summer in the Euros when she was doing television work, for which she's won awards. And it was such an important moment, another one of those landmark moments, because a women's coach, the women's game, kind of transcended the women's game, if you like, and, and people became kind of to know her as just a brilliant pundit in that environment. Yeah, she's some, Emma Hayes is somebody that has fascinated me as a player and I really wanted to, as a player, just play under her, just to get an insight into how she thinks and how, you know, how she develops her players. But as you said, in the summer, we got, we got an insight into what she knows and her, in, her football intelligence. I think what she proved is that, you know, the women's game, we are intelligent, intelligent, we are knowledgeable about the game and she certainly put women on the platform in terms of showcasing that for us in the summer in the men's Euros. Yeah, I think it was that kind of co-commentary, wasn't it, where she strategically and technically was kind of able to kind of give us a brilliant insight into the game and she communicates that well to her players. And I think what Emma Hayes has always done from years and years in the game has not been afraid to try new techniques, try new things and philosophies into individuals as players and that showcased during the summer. Yeah, well Emma Hayes of course is looking to bring Chelsea their third FA Cup today but let's head down pitch side now uh, where Jo Curry is joined by a woman who's been coached by Hayes at Arsenal, Chicago Red Stars and Chelsea but I think it's clear today Joe, where her colours lie. Yeah, I think the uh, the Chelsea hat may be a little giveaway. Thanks, Gabby. Katie, look, you've won the FA Cup a whopping ten times and with five different clubs. What does this trophy mean to you? It means everything. I think it's a These two teams are the two informed teams in the league. Is it possible to describe who's going to be underdogs, who's going to be favourites today? No, because, you know, Arsenal are on form at the moment, you know, it shows in the, in the league, you know, it's really, really close at the top. Both teams are stacked with quality players on both sides and the goals can come from both teams. I think it's going to be an amazing game, but really, really tight. You lifted this trophy with both sides. I was going to ask where your heart and where your head was at, but maybe it's where your hat is at. It's a bit of a giveaway. Talk to me about why you're wearing a Chelsea hat today and why they're the team you're backing. Obviously one of the, the last games I played was an FA Cup final, Captain Chelsea. Um, I obviously still work for the club too, so, you know, Chelsea's in my heart. Chelsea also the team that you, you finished your career with. When you look at the current side and how Emma Hayes has de developed them in the last few years, would you get into this current side? And if so, what kind of role would you be playing? 
I'd hope I'd get into the squad and I'd try my hardest to. I'd definitely compete for a place. Um, no, it'd be really, really difficult. I mean, you look at the players that she has there now, you know, and it's taken a long period of time for her to get to this position. But she's got players that she can bring off, off the bench now that are high quality. You know, what a squad to have. Your yeah, opinion Harder could well be one of those this afternoon as well. Katie, we'll see you at half time. Enjoy the game. OK, let's hear from Emma Hayes' opposite number now because Jonas Eideville has come into Arsenal this season taking over from Joe Montemura and made an immediate impact in terms of the style and tempo that we've enjoyed watching Arsenal play this season. And Joe caught up with him a little bit earlier. Well, Jonas, you've had the international window to contend with, but how long ago did you know that this was going to be your starting eleven for today's final? Oh, you never know that too early. Of course, you have an idea, but basically yesterday, that's when we decided, because then we can see which, which players are fit, which players are ready, and which player that will suit the match plan the best way possible. Arsenal are known as FA Cup specialists, but you haven't had the, the trophy now for five years. How much more pressure is there on you to deliver that today? I think we always put pressure onto ourselves when we are playing games for, uh, for this club. We want to be the best version of ourselves. We want to make ourselves and the fans proud on the way that we play today. And for you personally, how important is it that you deliver trophies to the fans? For a long-term perspective, definitely. It's one of the reasons why I came to Arsenal. It's one of the objectives that I have together with the team. And that's why we're going to make our, our very best today as well. Thanks, Jonas. Best of luck. Thanks. Well, he has made an immediate impact, hasn't he, in terms of the style, the goals they're scoring, and the players seem to have really responded to him. Yeah, and the squad depth that he's managed to assemble this year. And just like how you're seeing there, his vocal, energetic style, I think it's infectious. You see this Arsenal team full of smiles, enjoying their football, and I think that's what he will emphasise going out today. Go and enjoy it, and he welcomes pressure, and so should every single player. And every coach wants to improve players, and Beth Mead seems to be one of those who's really responded to Jonas fresh from her hat-trick in midweek for England against Latvia, of course, where England put 20 goals past the beleaguered Latvian side. She has this season had a real spring in her step. So where's that come from? Well, Arsenal legend Kelly Smith's been to find out. You've been in such great form uh, for club and country this season. What's driving what we've been seeing from you this year? I think this season my biggest change has been my mindset. The disappointment of not going to an Olympics was a tough one for me to take. Obviously, I've seen you in the off-season when I, when I had that, and I think that was the time for me to, you know, refresh and, and have a full pre-season and, you know, just knuckle down and work hard, and I did that. I'm enjoying every moment out there. Things are going right for me. I'm more confident in what I'm doing. I messaged you on Twitter, didn't I, just saying, what, what's different about you, and are you playing angry? And you said... Yeah, I, I, I play my best when I'm angry, but there's obviously, obviously that fine line of overcooking it and not and again maybe when I played for England was a little bit angry I didn't start and came on and produced it's worked out for me this season so far and got in sh shooting opportunities a lot more this season which was probably my downfall last season that I didn't do enough on. What's Jonas like as a manager? I remember pre-season our first session with him and yeah, he was shouting at us, he was screaming, he was asking if we were tired, and I think the girls were like, whoa, like, what's happening? Obviously, you seem quite animated on the sidelines in game. His celebration on the opening game yeah. at the Emirates against Chelsea. I think he said he took some skin <laughs> off his knee, he went down that hard, so. To see him celebrate like that, how did the team respond? Obviously, we were a little like, oh, OK, it's the first <laughs> game of the season, to be honest, but he's, he's a passionate man. It's Mead, twisting and turning. Norfolk, yet another date in the FA Cup final at Wembley Stadium. So moving on to the FA Cup, you've been on the losing end uh, in 2018 against Chelsea. Is there a slight um, thought of revenge for this FA Cup final from you? Yeah, obviously it's, it's one of the cups that I've followed um, being a kid. You know, I came and watched you guys play Sunderland at Derby when you beat them. Like I was in the crowd then thinking I want to play one day. Yeah, it was a tough one to take. Um, especially against Chelsea, who obviously quite, there's quite a lot of rivalry there. So I think there is a lot of us who want to kind of put that right. And the girls that have come in since have never had that experience before. And it's something that they, they're all excited for and chomping at the bit to get involved in. And as a girl from Whitby, Yorkshire, in the North East, I'm sure there'll be a really big Northern fan base cheering you on. Are all your family coming down for the big occasion? Yeah, they're going to try and get down. My dad, I'm pretty sure he'll be 
definitely there and amongst it and I'm some friends and family. Is he your biggest fan? Yeah, my biggest fan, my biggest critic. He's always there to give you advice and, and tell you when you haven't played well. If, I don't think I ever play well for my dad. <laughs> I don't think I ever ever come to game. I've had to tell him to, uh, when it comes to games, to be a bit more quiet than he used to be when I was younger. He can't get away with it anymore. <laughs> Well, what a lovely sight there. Leslie Lloyd and Elsie Cook, captains of the very first FA Cup final between Southampton, who are the winners, and Stratton Thistle, who are from Kilmarnock. Such an emotional moment for them, putting that trophy out there. God, it gives you a bit of, it gives you the tingles, doesn't it? Because you see for them what it means, and it meant so much to them then. And for them to stand there and see this Wembley Stadium about to enjoy this FA Cup final, whew, it's a bit of a lump in the throat, actually. Um, beautiful moment and one that we will talk about more at half time let's compose ourselves let's get back to, to Beth Mead who is the absolute epitome this season of the modern women's footballer disappointment for her last season and she's come back this season with an absolute intensity and intention Alex all about how do you respond it's that wake up call that maybe she needed to take her game on to this point actually look at yourself what do I need to do as a player how can I improve instead of pointing fingers and Farah I know you're doing your coaching badges and all over it and you've seen her game to another level yeah I think what Beth, Beth Mead's added to her game I think what we saw Beth Mead is a natural striker natural number nine likes to get in the box she was put out in a wide position and what you started to see from Beth she was coming short quite often you see here in this picture she's stretching the defense now and you've seen a lot more of this in this Arsenal team and Beth Mead she's running beyond defenders and causing problems and because she's that natural striker anyway she's a very good finisher but her assist as well she knows where her teammates are and other strikers and I think that's what she's improved from from the summer if there's an area potentially that this game could be won or lost today, is the midfield for you as vital as anywhere, Alex? Key from both sides. But what I think about this Arsenal side and how they have gone up a gear is the combination. I have to say, this is the best Arsenal midfield that I have seen in the last couple of years. Yes, they've always been full of individuals, but how do they combine? And with Leah Walty in there, and you've got Marnham, who's her ability to be physical, win the ball back, but actually play the ball forward. Can you get it into the likes of Beth Mead? to Miedemar and how quickly can you do that and obviously at the top of that which we want to speak more about is Kim Little as well but the ability not only to be physical but you've got this in your locker to add to an Arsenal team as well and we know the superstar which Kim Little is and all of them linking up in this midfield creates something for Arsenal that I've really not seen and we know Kim Little this is what she does best getting into areas, driving her team forward and putting the ball in the back of the net. So yes, you've got the strikers scoring, but for the midfielders to contribute in the way that they do. And Farah, you always know, midfield is where it's won or lost. So many superstars of the women's game. The global women's game will be on show today. We are moments away from crossing over to the first half of the 2021 Women's FA Cup final between Arsenal and Chelsea, two of the country's best teams going head to head. Chelsea win the FA Cup of 2018. It's going down. The anticipation. Arsenal 3-1 up against the champions. We a generation of legends in the making. I came ready to lay it on them heavy. Stand your ground. It's going down right now. I'm coming alive. I'm a real one. I'm on the rise. You see the look in my eyes. It's going down right now. Yeah, the players are lining up in that famous tunnel and it's the time where the nerves, you've got to get control of those, haven't you, ladies? You've got to get yourself composed. It's going to be a big occasion here. Ella Henderson's going to be singing the anthems. Emma Hayes looks as relaxed as ever there, Farah. Yeah, and I think, I think she breeds that in her team. I think when you look in the tunnel here, you can see the Chelsea players look really relaxed and focused. And I think both sets of teams will feel that. I think these are used to winning and playing in major competitions. And so I think this is a fantastic game. Uh, game. Both teams look really focused coming out of the tunnel now. They do. Just uh, one change Chelsea have made, Farrah, interesting from that 5-0 win. And uh, Sophie Ingalls coming in. Give us a little an insight as to what she brings, the Welsh woman. I think she goes under the radar a little bit. I think she's, you know, vital to this Chelsea team. She just sits in front of that Chelsea back three and gives stability and allows her team, you know, with the attacking players that this Chelsea team have, she allows her, her team to attack. So she's very vital to this team. Well, I know exactly where you two have uh, laid your hats today. We're very much divided in this studio. It's such an exciting clash we've got here on the BBC from Wembley Stadium. 
FA Cup record holders Arsenal against the two-time winners Chelsea and your commentary team today are Rachel Brown, Finnis, who won the cup with Everton in 2010, and Jonathan Pearce. Good afternoon. Thank you, Gabby. Good afternoon, everybody. The 51st Women's FA Cup final, the seventh to be played at Wembley, and surely the biggest of all time. An estimated 47,000 crowd for this clash of the top sides in the land. Arsenal WSL leaders, Chelsea reigning champions, currently second and seeking a domestic 2021 treble. The honour party out there to meet the two sets of players. Uh, a, a romantic day, a day of nostalgia when we celebrate 50 years of the Women's FA Cup, but very much in the present, Rachel, it's a game between the top two teams in the land. It is. I cannot think of a cup final, an FA Cup final, where we have had so much talent on the pitch. You look at the starting 11 for both sides, you look at the bench for both sides, and there is world-class players on each of those. There's very little to divide these two teams, and this really is the showcase product of women's football at this very moment. Sue Hoff, chairman of the Women's Football Board, and Alexa Murray, director of PR and Vitality, the sponsors meeting the players, the haze you can see there from the pyrotechnics. We're seeing a presentation to cut final teams post-COVID. We're in the middle of the pandemic, of course, still, but this is the first time in a showpiece occasion like this we've seen a presentation of that ilk, which is great to see. It's great to see a final being played at Wembley Stadium as the world of women's football expands year in, year out. And Ella Henderson, who's already belted out a couple today here, will sing the national anthem. Enthusiastic crowd. Arsenal, whose fans are away to our right on this damp, chilly Sunday, have no surprises in that lineup given that Leah Williamson, superb this season, was ruled out a few weeks ago with a hamstring injury. England's uh, Ruben Lottomoy and Jen Beattie of Scotland, four times a cup winner, but had the job of negating Sam Kerr. Catley and McCabe have been very strong down the left all season. McCabe and Beth Needs form so strong that Nikita Paris can only make the bench again. Little and Miedema have scored in cup finals, and the Dutch international has 15 goals this season for club and country. Disappointing for Chelsea that Vanilla Harder isn't fit enough to start. She's missed the last six games. Canadian Olympic gold medalist Jessie Fleming deputises as she did in their 5 0 win over Birmingham just before the international break. I want to change from that side as uh, Gabby was talking about Sophie Ingle, a 2012 runner up for Birmingham against Chelsea, is preferred to the long serving Drew Spence. Sam Kerr comes into this on the back of a hat trick against Birmingham. Their third cup final against the Gunners, one win apiece. Arsenal won the WSL meeting on opening day this season 3 2. That was a first win for them in nine clashes against Chelsea. A uh, very big day for the referee, Helen Connolly, from the Durham Football Association. It's the first time she's taken charge of a cup final. Rashid, uh, Lisa Rashid and uh, Emily Heaslip. Uh, she's from Suffolk. Uh, Lisa's from the Birmingham uh, FA. And Mel Virgin, the other uh, officials today, Lisa and Mel, running the lines. They're involved in their second final. She's had a good season, actually, Helen Connolly and deservedly here today. No Penilla Harder from the start, though, Rachel. But what ammunition that is for Chelsea to bring off the bench and 
We talked about the lineups, but it's not just the starting eleven. It is that depth. And you look at Chelsea, that is something that Emma Hayes over the a period of the last five or six years has looked to improve on is the depth of a squad, knowing that successful team wants to fight on all fronts. And this being the first one of the season, the FA Cup final. Well, when we were here the other year, Emma Hayes was very heavily pregnant on a very warm day, you'll remember. She looks a lot cooler today than she did that day when we thought we were going to have an event uh, not particularly planned at Wembley Stadium. And we're almost ready to go today with Arsenal in the red and white and kicking from right to left then on an immaculate looking, immaculate looking pitch, well manicured. And the referee checks both assistants. And we have a moment of almost quiet as the players of both sides, the match officials and the game officials, take the knee. Listen to this. Well, I hope you heard that reaction. There was a there was a cheer from everyone here for that, which is great. And hugely encouraging in the battle of their races. Off we go then with that strong Arsenal midfield that uh, Alex was talking about. The first touch in there from Marnham, uh, Balti and Kim Little, of course, so strong in there. And Catley down the left hand side. Just watch for her combinations with Katie McKay, who's often running now and expecting the ball down the line. It's intercepted, though, by Erin Cuthbert, who will play at right wing-back for Chelsea this season. A foul is given against her. It's an important role to play for Chelsea. They've slightly amended their centre-back trio as the season's gone on. They start with Millie Bright in the middle and Jess Carter the right-hand side, but Millie's gone to the right now of the three and she delivers a fantastic pass out from there. Watch for her diagonal deliveries from the back four, Chelsea. Yeah, the back, th all back three of Chelsea are very comfortable on the ball and they can use that direct pass forwards. And the Chelsea players were involved in the recent internationals, they're on the attack and they look for one of the finest of them all. And Kirby in the box just sails over the head of the 10-goal scorer this season. Sam Kerr has 14. Kira Wrighton on that left-hand side, she was the player coming in. She has a, a couple, but she's very dangerous in her supply. She's started three of the last four, the Norwegian international. I remember working with Emma Hayes at the uh, last international tournament, and she was trying to sign Gura Wrighton. Um, that was out in France, and she did eventually sign Gura Wrighton. She didn't play in the first season probably as much as Chelsea fans would have expected, but she's been key to their success this season. Just eludes Mini Bright. Goes through to Anne Katrin Berger, the German international on the bench in their last two games. They've got a fantastic defensive record at Chelsea at this moment in time of not conceding goals. I think it's six in a row now without conceding a goal. 593 minutes going into this since uh, Barbara Bonancea scored for Juventus. Chelsea on the attack. Here's Kirby through. And Kirby scores. And it's in the third minutes of the game, and Chelsea are ahead. It's the third time a goal has been scored in the third minutes of an FA Cup final, and it's Fran Kirby who gets it. You can see what Chelsea are doing when Arsenal were in possession, whether it's from the goalkeeper or the defence, they set a high press. Fran Kirby, Erin Cuthbert, Jesse Fleming, Sam Kerr, all of them were pressing high, saying, go on, play out the back and we'll try and nick it off you. They turned over possession, a ball played through. And if you want, there is it's Jesse Fleming gets it, turned over by Frieda Marnham, Sam Kerr reacts first, and who do you want running at you? It is not... Frank Kirby, if you are in the Arsenal goal, what a present that is for Frank Kirby, who, off of the back of severe illness last season, has been sensational for Chelsea this season. And what a way to start this game. Three FA Cup ties she's played in this run, three goals she has. The earliest FA Cup final score since Steph Horton for Arsenal against Bristol the Bristol Academy side back in 2013. That's a cool finish so early on in the game from Frank Kirby, but that's the appetite she's had for goal scoring. She's back to her best, we all know that. Yes, terrific. She had uh, such illness problems uh, round about World Cup 19 time, and uh, 
she said she could hardly get out of bed. She lacked any sort of energy. And finally it was diagnosed. She felt like a zombie. She said she had pericarditis. Took a while. Before she was back to full fitness. And goodness me, she's so sharp at the moment. Six goals in five games. But you can go beyond that. She has scored 184 senior goals in 218 games. But here's a worry with Sam Kerr down. Yeah, she's uh, certainly a tough player, Sam Kerr. It's not, like, it's not often that we see her requiring treatment. Just see Guru Wright and Frank Kerr with their little discussion across their roles. And it's lots of other Moy who just catches Sam Kerr. They're seeing here again, what a clinical finish from Frank Kirby. I mean, central down that middle of the Arsenal defence, getting beyond them, just that little touch. So clever. Sweet and sour, though, because it was that tackle on Sam Kerr that's left her down from the build-up in the goal. The impact injury, she's got 14 goals this season. Australian superstar, voted third in the world in the recent Ballon d'Or. And it's the impact, though, isn't it, Jonathan, that she has as a combination between her and Frank Kirby. They have been an unstoppable duo. 144 goals they have now for Chelsea between them. And there's a pensive Chelsea coach. Because while well, Chelsea have players who can come into lots of positions and do a very good job, and certainly Bethany England could come on for them if Sam Kerr can't continue at full fitness and she's struggling there as she comes back on there is just the one Sam Kerr there is no one quite like her in the world that's a foul by Jennifer Beatty and she's brought down Melanie Lerpoltz couple on four occasions Jennifer Beatty a couple of times with the Arsenal a couple of times with Manchester City number of goals she scored against Chelsea for City actually a few years back now Kerr, it's all Chelsea, Kirby, Kerr, this could almost finish it. Early on, straight at the keeper, anywhere but there, and it would have been 2-0 to Chelsea in the cup final. Could well have been one and lost, there's another burly challenge there as well. We can see what this game means to both teams, but I'll tell you what, Emma Hayes was stinging after that opening day defeat in the WSL at the Emirates when Arsenal and Jonas Eideval's first game brought the game to Chelsea. I think it left them stunned in some respects, and this game is retribution in some ways, I would expect, for Emma Hayes and her team. Fortune this one, great save from Zinsberger, actually, to be able to stand up big, but you would expect Sam Kerr to just slot that one side of the goalkeeper, as potent a finisher as she is. And as important as Sam Kerr is to Chelsea, Beth Mead is to Arsenal. Absolutely, ever-present this season, couple of goals uh, for Chelsea, uh, for Arsenal against Chelsea. In that game you were talking about at the start of the season, she scored eight goals against Chelsea in her career. Free kick into the box, looking for Kirby in there. And all the pressure is on Arsenal. You have to start games, you think, oh, both teams are going to set off and get the feelers out and just wait and see. None of that, none of that. Both teams have absolutely hit the ground running. Run away from Sam Kerr. Beth Mead was cautioned for the foul, by the way. The missed time challenge. Deserved the yellow. We're only in the game for a yellow card. Which is certainly a player who does not shun a challenge. She'll be wanting to do less in her own defensive third, though, and more in Chelsea's defensive third. She's been sensational. Probably, I would suggest, Beth Mead's best season so far this year. She's been sensational in this competition, four goals and four ties. It's been a meandering run. Because, as Gabby was saying early on, this is the 2021 final, delayed from last spring because of the backup of games due to COVID. Arsenal have beaten Gillingham, Crystal Palace, Tottenham and Brighton in the semi-final to get here. And they're just beginning now to get a toehold in the game. 
on to McCabe. And here's Noel Maric, the Newport Beach, California born Swiss international. BT. And the great BT sporting clan in Scottish rugby and Lions rugby. It's a very animated manager, is the uh, Arsenal box, Jonas Eideval. And uh, that passion he displays on the touchline doesn't go down well at all times with opposition managers. Anyone in particular? Well, Chelsea lost to them 3-2 at the start of the season. And I don't think uh, I don't think he won too many. Uh, I don't think we get too many uh, Christmas cards <laughs> from uh, Chelsea management. It was to, that that contest was unbelievable. The fire and the, the it was a wonderful day. You know, the whole spectacle was unbelievable. I was there, and it was such a joy to watch to see the quality of play on the day. He said the enthusiasm, it was welcome to the league, Jonas Edeval, and welcome to an instant rivalry between the two managers and two teams. There is uh, Emma Hayes, who scored that day through Erin Cuthbert, and Penela Harder left me with the two, and Vivian Miedemar had scored for Arsenal that day. Ten trophies in a time as Chelsea manager, the most successful ever. Squeezed away by Leo Velti. Swiss internationals. He's got to Uber Moy, qualified for the Netherlands, but an England international. Played recently in that game against Latvia, the 20 0 victory. Which, on another subject, Rachel, I don't think does any good for women's football whatsoever, a game like that, to be honest. It's a great win for England, of course, but. It doesn't. What it does do is uh, put out there for everyone to see the disparity between teams and ultimately what is a, the financial backing of both sets of teams and something needs to be done about the financial backing of a, the team that was exposed on that night which is the latvian women uefa and fifa have the mar to pump money into these countries for women's football then they've got to ensure the money is spent on coaches right at the start and in involvement at school level for women football as young girls is jennifer Beatty. So, sorry, sorry, Rachel. No, on that note, so much has been done in our country since I started playing at the age of 15 when there weren't girls' teams for me to join to where we are now, seeing this stadium um, full of people, a pre show as it would have been a men's game, live on TV at Wembley, best players in the whole world, fully professional league. There are so many things that we can say to see how women's football in this country has tra transformed. It can be done. First final of this competition played at Crystal Palace National Sports Centre. Things have moved on. And Arsenal moving forward here now. And the shot from range was by Vivian Miedemar in the last season before a contract ends at Arsenal. That's a worry. And the ball played out wide to the left was inaccurate. Been looking at Katie McKay, barely had a touch today. Been looking at why that is. When, our, uh, when Chelsea are out of possession, Erin Cuthbert is player to play marking her. She comes as a back four, drops in, and Katie McKay playing left wing back four, Arsenal, has barely had a touch. She's been so influential in goal scoring and assists in that defensive role as well for Arsenal, but not a sniff today. Ingle, such a good player. And Kirby, and looks for Kerr. Chelsea look dangerous every time they come forward. Kerr playing it slightly behind Grant Kirby. He wouldn't carry through to Guru right at will now look to play out Frida Marnham, better passer than that, normally the Norwegian international. Not particularly protecting the ball, Arsenal. That, that first year, by the way, the, the first recorded ever FA Cup time women's football, Leicester City supporters against the Wandering Angels. The final Southampton won by four goals to one against Stuart and Thistle. Not quite often these days, Ingle back covering. First three finals uh, had Scottish teams in them, Rachel, actually. We were allowed to compete in those days. If you want to find out more about the uh, history of the Women's Cup final, then a great read is The History of the Women's Cup Final by Chris Legg and uh, Patricia Gregory, who are uh, former colleagues of ours at the BBC. And um, Patricia worked tirelessly over the years. Fantastic, fantastic dedicated servant to the women's game. It's going to be away now. 
And the Arsenal goalkeeper Zinsberger, the busier of the two by far. Here's Kim Little, who's a game changer. A wonderful player. And Catling out wide again to McKay. And left of the front three, Mead on the right, Miedemar through the middle. Catley back then to Beattie. on the bench for a couple of her cup final successes, Jennifer Beatty. As the ball is switched away to the header out by Cuthbert, who's had a fine season for Chelsea. Does a good job wherever she's asked to play. And Kay can get the cross in, no she doesn't, plays it for Miedemar. And maybe they overplayed it, Rachel. Got a corner, mind you. Yeah, a little bit, but Erin Cuthbert stuck to her job. And Arsenal have sort of rode out the storm of the whirlwind start that Chelsea had and some good synchronised play, who else? Miedemar nearly, nearly at 1-2 with Kim Little played off, but she hustled enough with Miedemar to force Aaron Cuthbert into conceding a corner and Katie McCabe on the corners. This could be very effective for Arsenal. And a swing out, B2 will have a run from the edge of the penalty area. Miedemar's furthest out to the edge of the penalty area. Wood Moy at target two. Needles in the six-yard box. Right in front of the Chelsea supporters, this. From the way. The deep and disappointed. Little tries to head it back into the mix. Car out. BT stoops. And this is Steph Catley. And the Australians in the team. Peter McKay, the Irish international, looks for me. Pickle there, they've got in each other's way for uh, Arsenal McCabe, and uh, I think it was Marnham. Katie McCabe has dropped back deep to pick it up once again. It has been a sensational start by both of these sides domestically. Arsenal 16 wins in 18 games this season, one defeat in that time came against the European champions Barcelona. 56 goals this season. Just the 10 conceded. And Chelsea, of course, unbeaten uh, in 13. Eight league wins in a row. They're not conceding. They're scoring a bundle, and that's another hefty challenge. And the three will have a little word here. And they're in Cuthbert. I'd like to think you use common sense, the referee there. There's an FA Cup final. That is going to happen all day long between those two players. Two players who leave nothing to chance, leave nothing on the pitch whatsoever. That's going to be a stunning battle right under dry noses here. BT gets it away for Arsenal. Comes out to Fleming, into Kirby. It should have been two, it's offside anyway, wouldn't have counted Sanka. The second one, mind you, she sits straight at the goalkeeper, went in a good scoring chance. Certainly was offside, just that little layoff. It's a lovely ball. Arsenal should have dealt with that first and foremost. Too easy for Fleming to be able to slip in Frank Kirby. And then Frank Kirby unselfishly tries to square it. And it was the right decision by the referee. We've no VAR here today, but we do have goal line technology. We do. Which is an advancement. First time. Women's FA Cup final. We've had that. Things are moving on at the pace. This comes Magdalena Eriksson, so secure at the back for Chelsea for so long. The Swedish international captain of the side started 13 times this season. Only missed the one game. Cup winner for Chelsea, cup winner for Linköpings in uh, Swedish football. Okay. Dummy by Miedemann. With Nichols in that pocket of space just behind, a wearing 10 and playing the 10 role. That was a lovely run and a lovely over for Miedemar. I could see what intentions were. Kim Little couldn't control that ball from McCabe. It's a lovely ball forward, and this time the flag stays down for Sam Kirsch. She's had a look, might have to do it all her own. Now Frank Kirby, that might have been a penalty, you know. That might be revisited, that's a good save by Zinsberger. And the referee might check the assistant on this near side, no VAR. The assistant has a signalled penalty, though. So on we go. Great ball from Aaron Cuthbert. What they're doing is they are taking advantage of Leah Williamson being out, 
part of that central partnership with Robin Moy. Jem Beattie not, doesn't have the pace that Leah Williamson does. That ball is on. Great cutback from Sam Kerr. Is that a penalty? It is. Should be, but it's not. It is a corner. First of the game for Chelsea. Headed away at the near post by Beth Mead. Now here's Sophie Ingle, the Welsh international. Euro right in with the cross into the box. In that, uh, that far post. And there's a shot by Lurpoltz. Sailed over. She has got a couple of goals this season in this competition for uh, uh, Chelsea against London City, against Manchester City as well. And they are creating the game's chances, that's for sure. And they've got quality players on the bench as well to come on. I think it's the first time seeing Emma Hayes come off of her bench. That penalty decision will have riled her. She knows her team should be 2-0 up. Arguably, they deserve that. Not just with the penalty decision that was not given, but with their dominance that they've had. Just seeing their low pots. But here we go, this is the one. Sam Kerr has presence of mind to cut it back. Jen B is fully committed. Absolutely wipes out Sam Kerr. Should have pulled that back, even though they had the shot on goal. And here's Catley. And McKay. And that's the first piece of work that Anne Katrin Berger's had to do. First time, really, Katie McCabe's been able to get any form of crossing, just runs off the outside of Cuthbert, recognises Cuthbert that Millie Bright stepped out to press her, covers her exceptionally well. Van Katrinberger has been a big player for Chelsea since she signed from Birmingham. Some of the saves, that, the game-changing saves that she has made at critical times, in the Champions League particularly. Four years ago, she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and she was back playing within two months, so a remarkable character. And since I've been involved with commentating on women's football, what, eight, eight years now it is, I've, I've come across so many remarkable stories, you know, of uh, heartache, of loneliness, of anxiety, overcoming mental problems and great to see that these players are now being able to express themselves. Well, Jen Beattie on the pitch recently, within the last 18 months, has been through breast cancer and treatment for that. And here she is on an FA Cup final, leading out her team. Sensational. And it was uh, lovely listening to some of your stories when we were at the European Championship Finals in 2017. I couldn't make out a lot of what you were saying because it was quite late at night and uh, you'd had a couple too many lemonades, I think. I think you must be mistaken me for Sue Smith. <laughs> No, you're not a you're not a problem, Chuck. Now, Van Hayes is unhappy with the way the game is suffered at all. Because Arsenal are finding inroads into the game. The throw was too low. The ball was too long for uh, Vivian Miedemar. Fifteen goals in nineteen games for club and country. This is scored in the last three. And the main hope for him to get goals today. She should play in the last two rounds. A couple of goals earlier on in the competition. We have uh, two FA Cup finals in the women's game this particular season. This is we say in the 2021 final. And Arsenal are now beginning to get more than just a toe hold in the game. McCabe. Okay. Again giving support. It's Miedemar. Trying to open her body and bend it. Lovely build-up play. One touch, two touch, there's that almost telepathic knowledge of where a player's going to be. It's about checking, looking before you receive the ball so you know where your next pass is going. Viv Miedemar is so effective. We tend to see, and see her in the box, being on the end of Katie McCabe crosses, Beth Mead crosses. No secret that Leon wanted her to go to French football last season. But I uh, also need to secure the long-term future of Vivian Miedemar, the top scorer in WSL history. BBC Women's Football of the Year, named on Monday. It would seem crazy for Arsenal to not secure her services for the foreseeable. And she's on the ball now. 
dispossessed by Jess Carter. Other players had a good season, Jess Carter, really sort of a breakthrough season for Chelsea. She played a regular role for them in that back three, recently played for England. And the second and the third caps and scored in that big win against Latvia. Out by Engel. Fleming. Kirby and Skura right on that left hand side. So Kerr through the middle. Lansner flooding back, but very slowly. Little step over. Opportunity for Kirby. Good save. She's having a very, very good final, the Arsenal goalkeeper, Zinsberger. That was an excellent save from Zinsberger because when you look at it, Sam Kerr had all the time in the world to pick a spot. And that ball was going right in the corner. When we see this replay now, right in squares it back. Oh, it's Frank Kirby, apologies. She moves her feet so well, Zinsberger. Look how she gets her feet moving. Been able to take off then and cover what would have been a goal into the side netting. Perfect placement. Excellent goalkeeper. String goalkeeper played against England recently. Left it with the corner kick. What a free header. And it really should have been too bad missed by the captain. They are creating so many chances, and the worrying thing for Arsenal is that they're just not coping at set pieces. In the previous one, Rachel, they were so sluggish in getting back as well. Players were jogging and not sprinting. Well, we saw how Chelsea suffered when their captain and centre half Ericsson was out of the team, and I think similarly now Leah Williamson for Arsenal, centre half and captain of the team, and captain, current captain of England, is out of the team. I think these are signs of what she brings. This is an opportunity, though. No, McKay couldn't get there. Ooh! Interesting to see that one again. Just an opportunity for McCabe. And out came Berger. And there was a little twitch of a foot that's not good to see. Yeah, there's nothing in that. I mean, if you thought that this game was just a game, it's not. There's a real fierce rivalry between these teams. You know, a lot of these players will go away international duty together and have to play together. But that doesn't mean that there's no love lost. That, sorry, that there is, there is absolutely no love lost on an event like today. I'll give a capture call. Most international goalkeepers do. I mean, you wouldn't want to be an international goalkeeper who lost lost your temper and got sent off for your country, would you? That would be the pits, wouldn't it? I mean... It certainly would. But anyway, you can Google it, you know. See Rachel's past misdemeanours. I'll have you know that that one slip-up was actually, actually rescinded. No, it was rescinded, so it, but, it doesn't uh, exist, Jonathan. And you were provoked. I thought you were provoked. Thankfully, refereeing has moved on, hey, since then. Oh, goodness me, needed to. Here's Kirby. Right on that left hand side. Look at the space, look at the space here. Arsenal in real trouble in the FA Cup final. Oh, she couldn't clear her feet. The chance may well have gone. And in the end, the Arsenal just about cleared away. A lot of Uber Moy. And we've been helped up by Noel Moritz. Uh, Moritz has now given it away. She knows how big a chance that was. Chance after chance after chance. This time for right and here, just hit it. Touch, hit it. Oh, he gets stuck under her feet and she can't get a strike off. At times, this uh, front three or front four, front four, however many plays fully forward, have been too unselfish for Chelsea. She's going in the competition against Everton on the run. She's having a good run of starts as well. Norwegian international got a couple for her country recently in games against Armenia and Albania. They beat Armenia 10-0. And another chance now for Chelsea. It's Kirby with the shot that's deflected off Jennifer Beach, who came to the ball. What? Did get the block in. What a touch this is from Lloyd Paltz. I mean, Frank Kirby, fantastic running, but look at this from Lloyd Paltz. Takes it down right foot, nearly sells Jen Beatty. Jen Beatty actually shepherds her really well. Sets it down for Frank Kirby, and it's a good block overall for Marcel, but. They're hanging on by a thread, Arsenal. It's a corner kick here for Chelsea. Right, the near post by me. 
back in again into the mix, looking for Lurpoch at the far side. Emma Hayes will be not furious, but she'll be unsettled that a team not converting the chances. She'll be out there instrumenting things. She wants her team to put this game to bed. So what can they do here, Arsenal, Rachel, to get some authority back into their play in an FA Cup final? Well, here they have possession on the right-hand side with Maritz looking for Bethany. She's absolutely key. Maritz has gone out wide to her. She's bypassed her and forces the corner kick. And that's what Arsenal need to do, give it to Bethany. They do. Uh, clearly, in possession, you want to use the Arsenal that you have as in the ammunition that you have, and that is Beth Mead and it's Katie McKay, but defensively, Chelsea are countering them excellently well. When you're in possession, uh, when Chelsea are in possession, they have to stop the ball getting to Frank Kirby. Only half an hour play, corner ball for Arsenal. Ruben Moyes and their beat is in a lot of flat and disappointing again. And it was eased away for Chelsea. By Ericsson. Organisation at the back, very secure. Ericsson gets it away with the header. She's got right and dropping back for support. And all the way there through that uh, build up, Millie Bright and Jess Carter were looking along the line. Really well organised. Ingle forward. But with half an hour gone, Rachel, and total Chelsea dominance, the worry for them is it's only 1 0. Yeah, and a large lead, that's down to Chelsea. Almost well, not being incisive enough with that finish. You expect players like Sam Kerr, the one-on-one -on -one chance she had to just slot that in to the corner. Frank Kirby's had a chance. You could easily be 3 nil up by now, Chelsea, and Arsenal would have no arguments. Ruben Moy, one of those annoying people who seem to be very good at everything. Good netball player, good 800 metres runner. Sisters are a very good dancer for the ballerina. And here's Chelsea on the attack again. Kirby. Middleman will get it away. Good football out. Middleman have an opportunity here, Arsenal, because Middleman's isolated. One on one with Millie Bright. Touch not a down. Look how many players around her, though, Jonathan. Six players, all within 15 yards of Middleman. How quickly. They regain their shape defensively, Chelsea. Chelsea look the more cohesive team. Arsenal making more collective and individual errors, and Chelsea look the fitter and stronger team. There's a long way to go. Yeah, that turner of play. So when Arsenal regain possession, you've got the likes of Miedemar running with the ball, Katie McCabe running with the ball. They've got Ingle and Leupold, so quick to add to their defensive back line. They drop in, add extra numbers, swarm that midfield and just sort of choke any attack that's central. And Kirby scored against uh, Arsenal in the 18 final. She's done it again. They lead this by a goal to nil. In their fifth final. Runners in 15 and 2017-18. Runners up in 11-12 and 15-16. Razor into the box. Millie Bright. Well struck effort there from Millie Bright. Well, we've seen her score spectacular goals in the past. Yeah, right, right foot, left foot. She's become a key player, hasn't she, for both her club and the country, Millie Bright. Hasn't scored any sort of goal this season. What a brilliant goal in the community shield here for Chelsea. You seem to remember. Come on Similar in, territory, come on wasn't in, it? Yeah, come on in leaps and bounds. I think since World Cup 19, you know, that ended dismally for her in, in the uh, semi defeat. She was sent off, but since then, I think she's really matured as a player. Talk about her. Playing partner next to her there, who's just on the ball, Jess Carter. It's been a transformative last 12 months for Jess Carter. She came in really back end of last season for Chelsea when 
Marin Mielder uh, was out, defensive defensive player, and Ericsson was out, and they were playing in the latter stages of the Champions League, and they got to the final. And Jess Carter had not played really for the majority of the three years she'd been at Chelsea, and since then has cemented herself as a starter in the squad and. Uh, sorry, in, in the starting 11 and made that central of the three, back three, position her own. She made a debut against Arsenal for Birmingham. She was absolutely terrific in that game. I think it was a European game, if I seem to remember. Oh, what can Arsenal do here? With Lea Valti and uh, Ruben Moy. Well, they are so disjointed. It has been a bitterly disappointing FA Cup final, this. Jess Carter. They don't have the wide option. Kate McCabe is, is kind of coming a bit more central to try and shirk off Erin Cuthbert. Beth Mead's not getting any joy in that. His main, uh, that, from a width point of view, is Arsenal's main points of attack. If you're negating those opportunities, you're negating what Arsenal do best. Ingle forward. Straight foot race here. Ruben Moy, pressure ride by Kerr, who's allowed to go on. Sam Kerr hits the woodwork. Chelsea, no exaggeration, could have had four or five. Well, I thought that was an inevitability. Just shrugged off the ball, out-muscled Ruben Moy. And how on earth, how on earth, great timing of the little nudge there. I mean, you can't out that it's not a foul. That is just contact, Sam Kerr. She's done that a thousand times when the ball's been bobbling around. But to miss from that distance, she had a ropey start to her Chelsea career. As chances like that did go astray. She did against Birmingham just before the break, as uh, we were saying before that international break, when she played a couple of times for Australia against the USA. Beat him as far. She was used very sparingly by the Netherlands in the international break. With this in mind. Well, her role in, in this game so far has been reminiscent of, remember her role for the Netherlands in that she's doing a lot of defending from the front, a lot of additional running. The best Vivian Miedemar is having her in the box. She's such a potent and composed finisher. It wouldn't surprise me if Beth Mead goes for goal here with her right foot. She'll whip this in fiercely, I think. Oh, no, she plays it rather deeper, and it's a good punch under pressure there by Kutchenberger. Here's Kim Little. Hasn't been able to influence the FA Cup final, as Arsenal would have hoped. One of the best British players ever, the 140-time capped Scottish international. Blow for Scotland when she announced her retirement. Arsenal have not got her on the ball. Kathleen, Jen Beattie, then used fairly sparingly for Scotland recently, although I think she picked up a little bit of an injury against the Ukraine, went off early on, a half time I think it was, and here she is, Kathleen, Stayed wide on the left hand side, I mean, taking that free kick. Be an interesting development if they have switched McCabe and Mead for a period of time. Here is Beth Mead, 37 minutes gone. And one in there with Catley and Mead. Up to that right foot, crosses left footed there and forces the corner. Certainly worth a tactical swap. Neither were having particular joy, both getting a little bit frustrated, Katie McCabe and Beth Mead. Doing that allows a natural left footer on the right hand side to be able to cut in and potentially take a shot. And the same with Beth Mead, we've seen what she can do from this left hand side with her right foot. She scores goals, she provides an amazing amount of assists that she has added to her game for Arsenal. Comes back here to Catley with the cross into the box. A miss Cude header out by Carter. And Arsenal now can press. Cross away by Millie Bright. And the clearance lifted out by Kirby. Here's Leah Valti. It's going against West Ham in this run. She's played the last three ties, Leah Valti, in the 
Cup competition, been a regular throughout this campaign. A strong, competitive Arsenal midfield. And of course, the talent of Kim Little, the, the jewel in there. Second spell for Arsenal. Comes across from Catley. Carter heads it away, and as well as Frieda Marnon. Couldn't get the shot off. Well hit her hand, actually. Certainly, there was an appeal by Lerpotz. Well, certainly, Catley down this left hand side has been a lot higher in this last five minutes since the switch. Kate McCabe and Beth Mead have made. Catley is higher up. I would imagine Maritz is higher up, the other full back for Arsenal. No chance here now. Mead against Cuthbert on the outside. There's a little check. Back. That hit a hand. That hit a hand. Definitely hit a hand for me. Cuthbert was slithering on the ground. It was from close range. The referee didn't want to know. Little. This is a corner kick here now. Well, Arsenal appealing for a penalty. Well, it certainly hit hand. Really intelligent play from Beth Mead there. That's a penalty. That doesn't have to be intentional. Her arm is in an unnatural position on the outside of her body. It hits her arm. Beth Mead stops. It impedes play. Oh. The only thing I can think the referee's thinking is that as Cuthbert slid on the ground, she's using her arm to brace herself, which an uh, interpretation that, that wouldn't be given as a penalty, but I think it should have been anyway. Here's uh, once again Mead, real influence now. Tactical switch by the Arsenal coaches, certainly paying dividends early on here since they've made that move. So dangerous, ever present for Arsenal this season, six goals. Got a hat trick in 20 minutes against Latvia for England. Kerr out muscle, don't often see that. Lerpoltz couldn't clear it away, left the foot in there late. It's a free kick for Arsenal. They were having their best spell of the game. Clever. Clever play from the Arsenal player. Feels that. Contact is about to happen, and Katie McCabe makes the most of that. Earns a free kick for a team from a very dangerous position. There'll be the quality of players who'll be wanting to take this one. Meadmar, Little, Mead, McCabe. Take your pick. There's a little huddle. With four around the ball. We're three and a half minutes away from half time. Interesting distance, this one. I've talked about the women's game maybe having a draft excluder. They're not the tallest of walls. Should you have that? Should you have five in your wall, as Ann Berger has gone with? Peter Marna leaves it. Can't get the rebound. It wasn't the best of three kicks. Hit that wall. Marna will get it in second time. And it's all the way through, and they've got a chance here now, Arsenal. Miedemar on the edge of the six-yard area, they couldn't pick her out, but he bright got it away. Beth Mead was unmarked at the back post. If Wilbur Moy could have just picked her out at the back post. Much better now from um, Arsenal's point of view, but Beattie has taken it away from Zinsberger under pressure from Kerr. She got out of jail just... just... Miscommunication there, wasn't it, between the two? Beattie clearly had said, I'm taking control of the situation. Zinsberger clearly said she was taking control of the situation. But thankfully, from an Arsenal perspective, nothing major happened from that. But they do certainly look much better, Arsenal, causing Chelsea far more problems. I think because Erin Cuthbert is, has basically been there to fill in as a back four, as a right back when Arsenal are on the attack. Beth Mead is causing her more problems. She has more speed than Katie McCabe. She's probably a little bit more agile. Erin Cuthbert's got to think about cutting on her right foot rather than showing her down her left. Good switch from Adeval. Most of the half, it has panned out as a 4-4-2 for Arsenal. The way that Cuthbert has played on this right-hand side. Normally, she's the right wing back and right into the left, but it hasn't really... It hasn't played out like that, has it? No, I mean, out of possession, that is that is the tactic, certainly. You can see that Ericsson is given licence. We've always got three at the back for Chelsea. 
Ericsson steps up, stays higher. Stay three at the back. We'll see. Looking to get away. And it's a foul on Beth Mead, and I wonder if that's going to be a yellow. Has to be. Beth Mead would have been away there. Whether Erin Cuthbert. She's hurt. I mean, it was certainly contact, a collision between the two, but I would imagine it would be a yellow card to Erin Cuthbert. It was a lovely ball into space down the wing. On in her shin, just below the knee. Yeah, you see all the space that Bob and Moy has there. Let's it roll across the body, Beth Mead, and she was away. Great angle here, you can see. Beth Mead's clever because she's she's anticipating the contact. She knows that if she goes over, she'll get a foul and potentially yellow card against Erin Cuthbert. She knows if she doesn't go over, that she's going to fly into that space down the channel, Beth Mead. It's just an impact injury. She'll be OK. If it's a twist, it could be more problematic. Yeah, key play for Chelsea, Erin Cuthbert. Today, more so on a defensive role. On other days, it's supply to the front two. She's going to come back on three minutes of stoppage time. Here's BT. They do have uh, a Dutch international on the bench, right full back in uh, Annie Nova. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see should Aaron Cuthbert carry on, do they? Replace Aaron Cuthbert with an attacking player, or do they replace her with a flat back four and bring in Newen? Jonas Heideval will go in at half time if it stays on this and said, Look, we had a nightmarish half hour, absolutely nightmarish half hour, but you've shown in the last 15 minutes of the half you've got every ability to come back into this game. We have the created chances. What they still haven't done is tested and catching Berger, so they haven't got that final. final bit. And they keep conceding chances. And they've given the ball away again here. It's a run by Kirby and she's looked for Kerr and she's given her far too much to do. Fleming was open on the right-hand side for Chelsea and another chance has come and gone. Yeah, Sam Kerr again. That, that one was Frank Kirby just too heavy on the ball. Sure that Emma Hayes at half-time will be telling her front three, if you get half a yard, get your shot off. Doesn't always have to be perfect. A goal. Chelsea, seven of the 2018 starting lineup when they won 3 1 against the Arsenal. Five of Arsenal's starters that day. I still at the club, plus Katie McCabe. She came on a, as a substitute, I seem to remember. Arsenal froze that day, simply froze. Put her on by Kerr. Perhaps just misplaced her header. Wrighton has misplaced her pass behind Kirby and Fleming. And here's Miedemann. Look how deep she is. Mead. Down against Norport. The way the ball travelled, I think she might have touched it. Certainly flawed, Leavati. You see the replay. My initial instinct was there was no foul there. Arsenal have been too pedestrian on the ball there. In the back, in the back four, they've been hustled. From the midfield, really, Marnham and Valti have not had the impact that we've seen in other games. That's because ultimately they've not had the time on the ball to be able to pick a pass out. Jennifer Beatty, over 100 games for the club, uh, two spells. And Chelsea lead at half time in the 2021. Women's FA Cup final, Fran Kirby, in the opening three minutes of play, had put them ahead before they missed a plethora of chances. Good save by Zinsberger. You'll appreciate her performance, Rachel, but it's Chelsea who lead at the moment. Zinsberger's kept them in it, simple as that, as have been the spurn chances that Chelsea have missed. Sam Kerr, Fran Kirby, Guru Wrighton, all had chances that should really have put this game out of sight. Jonas Edeval should be just happy and telling his team they are still in it. 45 minutes to go, has to be a transformation for Arsenal in the second half. 
There's your half-time scoreline then with Chelsea leading Gabby by a goal to nil. Thank you, Jonathan and Rachel. Yeah, it's a scoreline which really doesn't tell the story of one side's dominance, does it? And Chelsea came out of the traps absolutely flying, the high press, the intensity. And it seemed to take Arsenal, Fran, a while to kind of get to grips with that game at all. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Chelsea looked the more relaxed in the tunnel as they were coming out. We mentioned that before the game. And they, and they mentioned, as you mentioned, they came out of the blocks flying. I think the press that they put on that Arsenal back four, re, sorry, the back four, really intimidated them and, and forced them into making errors that they're not used to. And I think that allowed Chelsea then to get on the front foot and create many chances in that first 30 minutes. If there's one thing Emma Hayes is going to be annoyed about, it's how many they've left out there. Because you never know how a game's going to turn at half-time and how many of those they may end up ruining. That's the thing. If this game does change, that's where Emma Hayes will be frustrated that you could have finished this Arsenal side off. It could have actually been embarrassing, Gabby, that Arsenal actually uh, still have an opportunity. They're still in this game to regroup and actually get back in this game in the second half. Yeah, there'd already been a couple of chances before Frank Kirby made it 1-0. And at that point, Alex, you're thinking this is the start of, you know, it's open season here. It really... It's Arsenal making mistakes. They've been the masters of their own downfall at times. And it's Chelsea reacting, that high press, winning second balls and that hunger to hunt impacts. And Fran Kirby being the superstar that she is, keeping her cool and her composure and nicely just slotting it home. Yeah, I think you see here what Chelsea have done different. This long ball, Sam Kerr, for me, has been a willing runner in his first 45 minutes. And you can see here really trying to stretch this Arsenal back four. What that allows for is second balls in that Chelsea midfield. And you can see the likes of Frank Kirby and um, Fleming picking up the ball in those pockets. And, that, and, and Frank Kirby gets a reward with a goal here. And it's the thing, a, yeah, yeah. Go on, I'm saying it's a fantastic finish. She takes it across to her right, and what she does is cuts it back across goal, makes it hard for the keeper to reset. And coming into this game, you're thinking Hard is on the bench, but actually, these two superstars were doing it all last season. That link up between Fran Kirby and Sam Kerr have been just phenomenal throughout this first 45 minutes. And there were a couple of penalty shouts as well, one for each side, actually. Let's have a little look at Chelsea, first of all. And this is Beatty on Kerr. Alex. Yeah, first looking at it, you're like, it's a definite penalty. There was actually one before where Jennifer Beattie pushed Sam Kerr, and if she would have gone down, definite penalty. It's actually, when we see the second angle right here, you can see maybe why it's not given, because Sam Kerr on Jennifer Beattie's foot and the ball's already gone. Yeah, I get that. I, I, look, Sam Kerr's called, uh, caused Arsenal back for a problem. These runs, this is, this is a desperate challenge here from Jennifer Beattie, and she's sliding once the ball's played. For me, it's a definite penalty. Yes, Sam Kerr's landed on Jennifer Beattie's foot, but for me, the slide is a, is a penalty. And then we go here with Erin Cuthbert. It's Beth me. Look, again, desperate defending from Cuthbert. She's slid, and the ball does touch her arm. And in the modern game now, we would say that's a penalty. Look, you can see the clear handball there. It wasn't meant, but look, it, it's hit the arm. Both of these have been given in other games. They have. <laughs> and they have, but do you know what? Emma Hayes won't be saying about that. Emma Hayes will just be frustrated that it could have been 4 5 nil, and the scoreline is only 1 nil. That we even show you that actually shows you that the ball did eventually get back down the other end of the pitch. Yeah. And, and Arsenal <laughs> did start to get into the game a little bit kind of in the last 10, 15 minutes or so. But Chelsea's chances, I mean, we've had to kind of edit this and keep it tight because we could have made this a lot longer. Gabby, do you know what? The difference is coming into this game, you think about both have experience, both have have great quality players but it's actually the difference what this Chelsea team has is they've got players that deliver on the day when there's no tomorrow game when you are under pressure and Arsenal making too many mistakes and they are hunting these Arsenal players forcing them to make mistakes and getting their own opportunities I think this is the improvement Chelsea have had in certainly in the last couple of seasons I think it's that winning mentality they actually know how to win games and I think you see there the press they aren't they aren't allowing this Arsenal team any time in possession of the ball they're really rushing them into making bad decisions and then they're picking up second balls and they've had chance after chance look Chelsea have been wasteful with chances in this first half and that's something I know that Emma Hayes at halftime will be mentioning again here this is soft from I think it was Ruben Moy it's soft and then Kerr has to finish that you know she's a top striker and these are chances that she should be finishing yeah, Emma Hayes is going to feel very frustrated, actually, that she's watched so many of those, you know, hit the bar, not go in for various reasons. But Zinsberger, you have to say, as well, has had to really be on her metal. I'd be running in that uh, change room at half-time, patting my goalkeeper on the back, saying, thank you for keeping us in this. We need to regroup, we need to go again. And those Arsenal players need to be looking around themselves and being those leaders and actually saying, let's not feel sorry for ourselves, let's regroup and get back in this game. And thank the Lord it's just 1-0. Yes. <laughs> OK, well, as we might have mentioned a couple of times already, the FA today, 
today is celebrating the fact this is the 50th anniversary of the Women's FA Cup. And this date was specially chosen because it's 100 years to the day that women's football in this country was banned from league stadiums and 50 years to the day that that ban was overturned. Our very own Alex Scott has been to meet some of the incredible trailblazers who were there at the beginning when football came back. We were laughed at, to be quite honest. I mean, we weren't mentioned in the media. We had to wash our boots with a pipe. It was crazy. We had no facilities, nothing at all. We played for the love of it. We just loved the game. Walking out, oh. You know, what a feeling. And there was a, a, just a wooden hut with supporters in with seats. That was full. But then round the perimeters, it was very sparsely populated. But um, fortunately, we came out for one winners. And uh, <laughs> I never forget sort of lifting the cup. Somebody put me on somebody's shoulders and I, we walked <laughs> round the ground. And that was my Wembley. I couldn't believe it, really. I, you know, I thought, gosh, the 90 minutes went so quick. Southampton went on to dominate the domestic game for a decade, but when their success started to fade, the Doncaster Bells rose. So you played from what 1970s to 2001. Talk to us about some of those the barriers that you had to overcome. One of probably the comments that stands out most to me is you play women's football, but you're a woman, you should be behind the sink washing up. Well, I don't know. Uh, OK, so they're committed and they train hard and they play exceedingly well, it seems to me, but I just can't kind of live with the ideas of girls playing football or taking part in any of the kind of physical contact sports. Am I just so out of date? I, I think yeah. so, Frank. You think so, do you? I don't see that you have any rights to claim football to your to yourself to your sex i think it still happens i think there's still that minority of people that say that you know women shouldn't be playing football but i think you know we've proven that we're there to be standing shoulders against the men fast forward to the present day and the contrast couldn't be more stark broadcasting deals which ensure that the women's cup final is always a highlight in the sporting calendar year i think i'm probably one of that kind of generation in the middle. Um, this final, actually, um, when we played Arsenal, I was 17, we couldn't afford a bus to the stadium. I would never think in a million years we'd be at Wembley regularly now. We need more kids playing, more girls playing, more clubs investing. We need to grow the fan bases, but yeah, there's room for improvement in every single area, I personally think. I don't think anybody can take away that all ladies that play they're obviously competitive. We were just as competitive. We're catching up that band, but it's hard because men's football was constantly growing through that 50 years. The class is now as a pioneer. There's been pioneers before me, and we've paved the way for the next, like I say, 20, hopefully 30 years. Well, you saw Leslie Lloyd in that piece there. She was the first ever winning captain with Southampton back in 1971. You saw her a little bit earlier as well, bringing out the trophy and putting it on the plinth, a very emotional moment. Well, she is pitch side now with Joe Curry and Katie Chapman. Well, Leslie, you were the first ever captain to lift the Women's FA Cup. That was played at Crystal Palace Sports Ground. Things have changed quite a bit since then. Did you ever think 50 years ago that the current teams would be playing here at Wembley? No, I mean, it's amazing. It's such a, a fantastic achievement. But, I mean, we in our wildest dreams didn't think that, you know. We'd like to, thought, to think that we would go on and bans wouldn't happen again, but we never imagined this. It's fantastic. And the skill that they play with nowadays, oh, it's, am it's amazing, amazing. Yeah, things have moved on a little bit. I was told before that final, your pre-match meal was a cheese and pickle sandwich. I think certainly have moved on. What does it mean to be honoured here today and represent the team that won that trophy all that time ago? Oh, it's absolutely brilliant because um, we haven't really been recognised um, years ago. And, you know, whenever I watch the television and I watch ladies' football, I think, Oh, you know, we were part of this. 
years back, I know, but you know, it's just come on leaps and bounds now. Hasn't it, Jess? You will always be a trailblazer with this sport, Leslie. Wow. Katie, let me just bring you in there. You were the first female captain to lift the trophy here at Wembley. What are your memories of walking up those stairs? Oh my God, it was an amazing feeling. I think coming to the home of English football and yeah, being able to walk up them stairs and lift that trophy, was like, it was a dream to be a female athlete and do that. You've won this trophy 10 times, five different clubs. Is there any one memory that really stands out for you? I think I've said my first one. I won it when I was 14. So that was the first one. I think they give me the hunger to want to win more. And clearly 10 down the line, you know, I'd still be loving to play today, actually. <laughs> well, uh, thank you both for speaking to us. Enjoy the second half. Thank, thank you. you. Katie Chapman said that a few times today already. I think she genuinely thinks if she brought her boots, she could get she out could there. She could still do a bit as well, uh, Gabby. I mean, what an incredible career she had. What a glittering career she had. But, you know, that piece, Alex, and I've seen it a few times now, is so, so lovely as a reminder, you know, of how far the game has come and really poignant as well that today is the anniversary of the, of the ban being lifted, but also the ban being put in place. And, and even in the 80s, women's football wasn't played at league grounds you know and it is it's a 50 to 75 year lag isn't it behind the men's game because of that ban and it's for people like Leslie and Jill Portard and many others we have to thank them because without them fighting and carrying on that we wouldn't be standing here we wouldn't be seeing these finals played at Wembley and yes we can be angry but you can't change what has gone before so it's actually thanking Farah most capped player for England, you know, and everything that you've done for women's sport. And I know my responsibility standing here to keep pushing this game forward because, yes, it's great, but we've still got so much further that we can keep doing it and keep moving this game in the direction we all want it to go. I think it was Leslie in the piece who said that we didn't know if another ban was coming. Imagine that as well. You know, you're starting something that you're really passionate about. You've got a team together, but thinking at any minute now the rug might be pulled from under us. I know, it's crazy to think that, but you know what's so nice about those pieces? How genuinely happy they are for the women's game and where it was and where it's gone to. As Alex mentioned, they could have been bitter, a little bit jealous of how far the game's got gone and how many women before our, our game and what they've done for us. But they're actually genuinely happy to be here today, to be able to support the women's game and keep pushing it. It's fantastic to see. Hopefully that's because they understand their place in history, actually. And today, the FA giving them that support, giving them that platform as well, I think it's been really important. The captains have all been invited of those winning sides over the last 50 years. Well, here on the BBC, we have loads more sport for you and a place you can always visit to find out more information is the BBC Sports app. For everything you need to know about your team this season, download the BBC Sports app. All the latest news, goal updates, stats and scores, and insight and analysis. <laughs> Just select your club to get the biggest stories and best content at your fingertips. What a result! Download the BBC Sports app for everything you need to know about your team this season. And you can watch highlights from all the weekend's Premier League games on Match of the Day 2 tonight. It's BBC One at 10.30. There's also Match of the Day FA Cup highlights from the men's second round on BBC Four tonight at 7, repeated on BBC One at 11.45. And on BBC iPlayer right now, the documentary Robbie Savage making Macclesfield is there for your enjoyment. Uh, well, it's 1-0 incredibly here because of Chelsea's chances in that first half. Arsenal are still very much in this fight at Wembley Stadium. Who will be the 2021 Vitality Women's FA Cup winners were 45 minutes away from finding out. Chelsea on the attack. Here's Kirby through. And Kirby scores. And it's in the third minutes of the game. And Chelsea are ahead. Anywhere but there. And it would have been 2-0 to Chelsea in the cup final. Opportunity for Kirby. Good save. He's having a very, very good final. The Arsenal goalkeeper, Zinsberger. Sam Kerr hits the woodwork. Chelsea. About four or five. Well, no shot on target for Arsenal in that first half, and Jonas Seidervall there might be just contemplating that and how he is going to get his women scoring in this second half because first thing they've got a level game Alex before they can go on to win it for me they need to cut out their individual errors all over the pitch they've just been a bit off in that final pass it coming off a shin pad here and there start connecting passes and cut out the mistakes I think they have to find their key players in in good areas of the pitch I don't think they've played the Arsenal way that they've been doing this season I think once they they find their rhythm you'll see a more entertaining game and, and more end-to-end -end, uh, game for Arsenal Chelsea well there's a woman who can change a game Vivian Miedemar and she knows she has it in her locker she has the skill and she has the experience 
to turn this round for Arsenal in the second half. But Emma Hayes, I'm pretty sure, will have also said to her team, listen, you had so many chances there. You've got to go out with the same intensity, the same tempo in the second half. And no regrets. Don't let this one come back and haunt you. Keep pressing Arsenal, keep making them, them make those mistakes and finish your chances. Well, there they come. They've let Arsenal get out first. Arsenal in a huddle on the pitch, but Chelsea, Frank Kirby there, their goal scorer. And Sam Kerr, who should have had at least two in that first half behind her, the Australian international, will be desperate to hit the back of the net as well in the second half. Let's rejoin your commentary team now for this second half. Former Everton goalkeeper Rachel Brown-Finnis and Jonathan Pearce. Thanks very much, Gabby. Can't see any changes in the Arsenal 11 as they come out, nor the Chelsea 11 as they come out to the right-hand side, so they'll be kicking towards their supporters in this second half and looking to extend that 1-0 lead. Totally deserved, should have been 4 or 5 at least. And uh, both teams have had a good penalty shout turned down by the referee. There's the goal scorer, Fran Kirby. Netted in 2018 in the final and netted again here today against the against the Arsenal. Who were so far off colour in the first half. It was unbelievable. They've had a brilliant season, Arsenal. And yet they were way, way off the mark. And don't forget, Chelsea have gone six games without conceding a goal. 638 minutes now without conceding a goal. Uh, side. Good mathematics there, Jonathan. Mm, probably wrong. I wouldn't be surprised to see Kim Little staying a little bit higher for Arsenal. Freedom Arnhem being given that more roving role, being able to attack, and seeing Leah Vaulted, a kind of more defensive midfielder of the three, sitting on top of the back four, add a little bit of defensive solidity. There she was, Leah Vaulted. That's the way they've lined up. And, uh, Vaulted just in front of the centre backs, but they've missed out here. For Fran Kirby, bright start by Chelsea as they started the first. But look how high on the left hand side. Lynn Erickson looks. Here's Kirby. Yeah, that's what they do. They keep three at the back, and whether it's Aaron Cuthbert who slides on and, and uh, pushes really high up, or whether it's Erickson who, who does the same on this left hand side. They've started exactly how they started the first half, Chelsea, in Arsenal's faces. It took so long for Arsenal really to get out in the first half. 25, 30 minutes, then they had the good spell, but as Gabby was saying at half-time, they haven't had a shot on target. 1-2 played, returned to Kirby by right, and a little bit too much pace on it. Yeah, and even as much progress as Arsenal made, they still look vulnerable at the back. A long or direct ball to Sam Kerr, Frank Kirby. Their pace was really catching Arsenal back line off guard. Arnes's fans will hope that Frank Kirby is amongst the goals in the European Championship final here next summer. Serena Wigman will certainly hope that, the England coach. She's here somewhere, we believe. What an exciting tournament that is in prospect. 2005, when we last hosted the Women's European Championships, it was up in the northwest as a part of that, and it was an amazing opportunity to see fans from all over the country get involved. But it'll be something quite different this time around. Jennifer Beatty. Add them to Catley. To get McCabe away. But Minnie Bright. Now Beatty. Bounce of Anna Hayes thought it hit an arm. She immediately appealed. And Bright again clears it away. Next goal in the Women's FA Cup final of 2021, absolutely crucial. Here's Miedemar looking for the run into the box. It's a good run into the box as well. Kimmichel does that so well, so often. Just slid away from her in the end. Yeah, positive for Arsenal fans, seeing Kim Little higher up. Too many times in the first half, Miedemar was isolated, was having to drop deep. She does on this occasion, but she has those attacking runs. Those runs in advance. And as you described her in the opening minutes of this game, Kim Little is a game changer and has been for so many years for Arsenal, for Team GB, for the Scottish national team. And uh, experience in FA Cup finals as well. Twice a winner in 2011 when she scored, 2013 as well. 
Mitchell Yankee is the most successful individual player in the competition, by the way. 11 victories with uh, Arsenal, nine, a couple with Fulham. Tucked down that right hand side by Cuthbert. And here's Kirby. Looking for the Scottish international again. It breaks down there. Arsenal can't get it away and retain possession. Nothing to suggest the pattern of the second half won't be exactly as the same as the pattern of the first. Yeah, you're right, as in Chelsea are still looking, exploiting the vulnerabilities of Arsenal at the back. Although Arsenal do seem to have more in attack. 1 0, tight scoreline. There was a day in the history of the Women's FA Cup final when there were huge scores. Southampton, eight QPR, two in 1978. Pat Chapman scored six. Hearing some of those names and seeing the, the women who were, were honoured on the pitch at half time, captains from each of their decades, captains from winning FA Cup teams. I met up with a lot of them on Friday at an event at Preston North End celebrating 100 years or acknowledging 100 years since women's football was banned. Preston North End being the home of Dick Kerr's ladies, which is one of the, uh, the the history that's been dug up by a lady called Gail, Gail Newsham, who's written several books on it. But it just was a wonderful celebration of where women's football was, what it's been through, and where it is today. It all must start with inclusivity at school level and get more girls playing for Bolton development through, and that's what is happening now, thank goodness. Here's Little. She's buzzing now, Kim Little, and beginning to find little pockets of space. So she does best in that 10 roll, receiving the ball, twinkle toes. Mead, lovely turn. Mead, good challenge on it. Very good challenge by Jess Carter. And Arsenal now. Oh, I was going to say, finding their touch. That's on a good ball by Leo Valtic. One nil. It's a challenge by BT on Kerr. No free kick given. Kirby. Right has asked too much of Fran Kirby. And away by Ottawa Moy. And a foul this time for the challenge on Mead. She did very well, Beth Mead, to get a ball. Uh, sorry, to get her body between the ball and the player. And again, feeling that contact going down. Great feet from Beth Mead in this. See how tight Ericsson is to her, but she wriggles away. Right foot or left foot, Beth Mead. She's comfortable on either, but Jess Carter sticks to her task exceptionally well. She's growing as a player. In the England reckoning, as we were saying earlier, and, uh, 45 minutes against Austria. And, uh, against Latvia in the 20-0 romp. 1-0, by the way, is the most common scoreline for a women's FA Cup final. 11 times the final has ended this way. That change now. Stamped on by Maritz and cleared by Chelsea. And it's stayed down this right-hand side. Here's Leo Volti, who doesn't use it. Ruben Moy. To Marnham and back again. Now here is St. Merritt's, five times the winner of the German Cup with the Wolfsburg. They've given it away again so cheaply, Arsenal. Kirby looks for Kerr. Ruben Moy squeezes it away. And here's Katie McCabe. Been a good battle that McCabe and Cuthbert. I just see Erin Cuthbert. You ask Erin Cuthbert. Play left side midfield, play right side midfield, play right wing back, play as a 10. She'll do a great job for you wherever she's asked to play. She's been an unbelievable asset. She's bided her time and to some degree at Chelsea. She's not always started uh, for, for Chelsea, but this season she has been absolutely, as you said, stuck to task defensively, attacking, option. She's been absolutely irreplaceable for Chelsea. You look for Kirby. Beatty got it away. 
when they can't get yardage with the clearance Chelsea will come again Ericsson angling it into the box just headed away that's a really important header away by Catley the Australian what a ball that was from Ericsson Catley does deal with it well but you see this set back by right and, and absolutely arrowed in looking for the space not the player and marshalled really well by Catley I mean, as much as Chelsea rely on Frank Kirby and Sam Kerr and those intricate runs, they've got that in the locker, haven't they? A direct ball into the box, cause a problem. Opportunity here for a second. Right through the box, Fleming was there. Now, just cut. Lovely ball, what a lovely ball. Really good ball and a good take as well. And the cross by Cuthbert and the header by Kerr, and it was deserving of a second. What a beautiful passage of play. Well taken ultimately by Zinsberger. But this touch from Cuthbert is a brilliant ball out from Ericsson, I think it was. But being able to get that ball across just shows you what Aaron Cuthbert can do in attack as well. Just stretching for that header, couldn't quite get a pace on it. Five saves now by Zinsberger in this FA Cup final. And we conceded one in the last six appearances. Little. This is where Arsenal need options. Kim Little on the transition, on the turnover. She looked up. The only person there was Miedemar, surrounded by three Chelsea defenders. Freedom Arnhem needs to come alive, start to check, make little runs, find angles. If they look up now, Beth Mead is open on the right-hand side, but they couldn't find her. And she's still open, really, if they can get the ball out to her. The danger has now been seen by Ericsson. But at times when Ericsson does get drawn into the middle, as the left-side centre-back of three, and Wrighton stays a little bit further up, there is space behind the Norwegian. Yeah, what's making it so hard are out of possession Chelsea, they're placing themselves and they're moving into positions and angles that cut off those simple balls. Just a simple example before was couldn't, a lot of them why couldn't play a square pass to Jem Beattie because Sam Kerr got herself in a position to nick it. And they're doing that all around the pitch, Chelsea. Frank Kerb is working so hard out of possession. Little, no centre of gravity, passes around, Moritz, Beth Mead, Ingle was there, not for the first time in the game to do the, the unheralded stuff, and they've got a chance here for Kerr to get in behind Ruben Moy. He's all alone here, Sam Kerr, Fleming's joining on the far side, Kerr doesn't use her, Romford's the goalkeeper, Chelsea are 2-0 up, they have one hand on the cup. Lovely finish, knew exactly what she was doing. Well, for all the intricate, phenomenal, skillful build-up that Chelsea have shown, they they undo Arsenal with a simple direct ball, head down, running at player, 1v1, and a clinical, knowledgeable finish from Sam Kerr, one of the most prolific goal scorers in the whole world. She does really well, gets across, gets the ball, goes, at Bubba Moy, gets her head down, commits her, knows that the goalkeeper is anticipating either a ball across or a shot across her. And she uses the legs of Bubba Moy, goes through those, unsights the goalkeeper and sticks it in at that near post. When you're as there as a goalkeeper, Zinsberger, you're taking your position off of the defender, the defender's covering the near post. So when it's struck through the legs of the defender, you're covering the other three-quarters of the goal and it's so difficult such a clever finish from one of the world's best highest score in the history of Australian women's football highest score in the history of women's uh, league football in the USA and for Chelsea she gets her 44th goal in 58 games and that's a kick in the teeth for Arsenal for all that they've improve their performance in this second half just shows you how vulnerable they're still leaving themselves 
Sorry, Reg, Larson's formation simply hasn't worked. They're going to have to make a change. I can see. Is that Ibal Vucci about to come on for them? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a this is a really clever midfield player and uh, has been over the years one of the best in the world, certainly. And she'll get her opportunity to come into this cup final. Japanese international. BT in the air there, very nearly by Frank Kirby. That really shouldn't have happened. Be interesting to see whether he does make a, a change in formation or whether he what I anticipate is uh, Marnham come off, Iwabuchi come on, more technical, being able to thread that ball through Iwabuchi, a very, very assured player. Technically gifted Japanese international on a World Cup winner in 2011, silver medalists in the London Olympics. She was a sub in the final here. Here's Jennifer Beatty. Imagine Valti would go off, might be Marnham, but I think it'll be Valti. Now, oh, also got an opportunity, Beth Mead is going right to the left hand side again, which she caused one or two problems. Miedem has had a quiet final, and she was unaware there. There was a tackle coming for communication. Chelsea clear to Kerr. River Moy misplaces the clearance. A football match littered with Arsenal mistakes. Approaching the hour, they're 2 0 down. Kirby turning away. Here's Ingle. So steady, Ingle, right in into the box. And he just couldn't get the final ball in from Eriksson. He's got forward so willingly on this left-hand side for Chelsea in the in the second half in particular. Little now for Arsenal. You can see that Iwabuchi is about to come on. She was at Aston Villa last season. She was there uh, having moved from Kobe Leonessa. It is Leah Velti who goes off and on comes Iwabuchi. Scored against Scotland in the last World Cup finals, then the Olympics in the summer, and was five times a cup winner in her home country with the Beleza side. Got some work to do to get a cup winner's medal here today. An hour gone, Chelsea look for a third. Kirby, Ingle, lovely ball, right and Kerr's far post, hoisted up to it, and there was no one in the middle, but look at the red shirts back there, jittery, panicky, there was no pressure on them whatsoever. Oof, that was cool under pressure from Arsenal. Frank Kirby, you would have expected, and that's what Sam Kerr was thinking, wasn't it? A little nod back in to the middle. Frank Kirby set that press. She forced Arsenal to the, into, into the errors. See your appetite for this game in particular, Frank Kirby. We're seeing the best of Frank Kirby today. One of the very best in the world. She's lived her life really in the glare of public scrutiny, Frank Kirby. She was so young when she played in Canada for England. Nothing on there for Arsenal's offside anyway. Mark Samson talked about his fox in the box in in Ran Kirby. Free kick here then to Chelsea for the offside. Yeah, certain offside. This back line of Arsenal, uh, sorry, of Chelsea have been so disciplined, been disciplined in their utilisation of, uh, of the back line to hold offside, but also disciplined in their fluidity and who's gone forwards. Ericsson down this left hand side, Cuthbert down the right hand side. So well oiled. And Kirby's often talked about the anxiety problem she had as a, as, a, as a teenager. She lost her mum when she was very young. And uh, the last three years of uh, her life have been so eventful with that illness and then the recuperation and the recovery of four. It's, it's wonderful to see a, a happy Frank Kirby because I think that is what is making the best that we're, uh, uh, Frank Kirby as a footballer is her as a happy person. Need a mark. Kirby made the run off there. Here's Iwabuchi. Just took it off the back foot to give herself an extra half a yard. And we're there once again for Chelsea to plug the gaps. You know, we've talked about Kerr, we've talked about Kirby and, and the likes of Wrighton and so on and so forth. But Sophie Ingalls had a very, very good final. She reads the game so well, doesn't she? And she's been doing that key role for Chelsea for 
a long, long time, just sitting in front of that back four, sitting into the back four or back three at times when required. Got into the Team GB squad this time, recognition of the fantastic work that she's done and leadership she's had at Chelsea. Held in high esteem by a manager, I can tell you. For the first ever WSL goal against the Arsenal. She was playing for Bristol at the time, seven years ago. And there she is making a challenge. Known for a goal scoring, known for doing just that, what she's done there, breaking up opposition attacks. Runner up in the Cup of 2012. I remember when Katie Chapman retired from Chelsea and there was all, something missing in that heart of midfield and I think Sophie Ingle has been that replacement. Here's Niedemar, McCabe, and away it goes by Erin Cuthbert. Collision there with the Millie Bright, but she got it away, Erin Cuthbert. Yeah, a little bit of chaos there. Neither one of them called it off. This is promising for Arsenal. Want a kick here for Arsenal. And they inject new life into this cup final. Not like that. Not like that. On the rare occasions Arsenal had free kicks, Katie McCabe and Beth Mead, the deliveries have been disappointing. Well, Frank Kirby trying to get away there was certainly fouled by Katie McCabe. There's going to be a yellow card pulled out. Good one to take for the team, though, Kate to McCabe there. Right decision. She gets called to the referee. The bookings now for Arsenal players. At length, a yellow card produced. Boos from the Arsenal fans, but... Pretty, uh, pretty cynical, Katie McCabe knew what she was doing there, but if I was in goal for Arsenal, I'd have been grateful for that. I mentioned that the England coach was uh, supposed to be here today, I'm sure she is. But, uh, Vic Akers is here as well, uh, the most successful coach in the history of FA Cup finals. With Arsenal, a really created Arsenal Women's Football Club, Vic, I'm sure that uh, Alex Scott would agree with me. Kelly Smith is here, Arsenal legend, England legend. Joe Montemura was supposed to be here, the Arsenal coach of last season and the coach of Juventus. They played them in the Champions League in the week. Yeah, Vic Ake has really made women's football, put women's football on the map, his Arsenal team, the quadruple winning team. Came on to so much success. Really led the led the line in what women's football was in an era where it was amateur. Tried to make it as professional as it could be. Employed a lot of the the women at Arsenal Football Club. Here's me. The uh, crowd here today, 40,942. A little bit lower than expected. They were expecting a bigger walk-up today. It's a cold, cold afternoon. The rain has stopped now. It was pouring down half an hour or so ago. BT. I haven't got my thermals on. I'm sure everyone's delighted to know that fact, but anyway. You look a little bit green there now. Do you want? Oh, I, I'm toasty. Now, Nina's on that left-hand touch line, she's not used. This is a bad one for Arsenal. Oh, what a disappointing pass, but Berger came for it. Might have got a slightly note on it. She's got a bit of cramp, the goalkeeper. She had, I think she's got a touch of cramp. Oh, now there's a chance of a breakaway that's stopped. But the goalkeeper, the, the goalkeeper is in such... Pain, the referee is drawn attention to that. She's just got cramped. Yeah, you can see when she took off to uh, punch that cross. It was great cross with regards to the area that she put it in, second six yard box. 
above Moy there, just you know, a little bit lackadaisical with a touch. And who else but Frank Kirby hustling the back line. Oh, she does get a little kick in her face there, Frank Kirby. I think but she's holding had, her knee. I think the whistle had gone, but the referee had called attention for the, for the medical staff to go back to the goalkeeper. That's why a free kick wasn't given. And she, if that's the case, then Chelsea will fume. Certainly should have been a free kick to Chelsea. They've got the time now to communicate with fourth officials, with assistants, to come to the right decision. But not often you see a goalkeeper get cramped. Must be something to do with that cold weather you're on about. <laughs> yeah. Don't think she's got thermals on either. Well, she's still down here, the goalkeeper, and at the other end, so is Fran Kirby. Caitlin Ford. Yep, about to come on for Arsenal, forward player. Another of uh, Australian players brought over originally by John Joe Montemuro. John BT will depart, so centre back goes off and a forward comes on. They have to bring on extra power up front. They have to get back into this cup final very imminently. It's slipping away from them. Frank Kirby does look. Pretty uncomfortable, gingerly walking to this near touchline to us. Ellen Ford, four goals this season, the Australian international. Started four of their last six games, has a couple of goals in this run against Tottenham. Match of the day live next Sunday, 12-15, Brighton against Manchester United in the WSL. Brighton have punched above their weight this season. Under the former England manager, Powell and Manchester United. And the new management this season. She's up. Yeah. Okay. A couple of uh, weeks off international duty, FA Cup final week. Girls will be raring to go in WSL again next weekend. Here's Little. Ford is away on the left-hand side, Meads come to the right, Midamar through the middle, Little and Iwabuchi either side of it. It's virtually a front five now for Arsenal. The, da the, the danger for that is being caught on the counter. Yeah, Marnham's just scanning across. Hold, the, in that holding midfield role, protecting that back line for Arsenal. They have to gamble, simple as that. Edeval has to gamble in this 20 minutes to go to salvage something. Wilbur Moy. Maritz back to her. Without Zinsberger in the first half, Chelsea would have been home and hosed by the break. Biedermar with a little flick off. Cleared away by, once again, Harry Cuthbert. Kerr looks for Kirby, she's OK now. Four red shirts there for Arsenal. She shouldn't get a shot away. She does get a shot away and it's the woodwork. And then Ingle blasted in. And they were a lick of paint away from going three up. She's huddling now, Frank Kirby. That's straight. But that is... As a goalkeeper, your defenders are backing off, they're backing off, they're backing off. It's so frustrating. She's run such a long way, Frank Kirby. Yes, she's tricky. Yes, she's fast. And what an effort that is. Zinsberger rooted to the spot. But just no pressure on the ball. You've got numbers back, Arsenal. You have to commit. You have to get in Frank Kirby's face. Zinsberger there looked like the standing Sabutio goalkeeper. He used to get a diving Sabutio goalkeeper or a standing one, which the standing goalkeeper couldn't see the point of, to be honest. Um, that's one for the youngsters there. If you don't know what Sabutio is, then look it up. Fantastic game. Tabletop football in all its glory. <laughs> and I think Frank Kirby's going to go off in a minute. Tanilla Harder will come on, she's getting ready. You can see on the far side behind the coach. Not a bad player to bring on. Lovely ball from Irabucci there, you can see what she's trying to do. A little rifle ball, cut out three or four Chelsea players. It's just this stagnant Arsenal. When they're on the ball in possession, there's not enough movement. Credit to Chelsea, they are. Marshalling that movement. 
really restricting what Arsenal can do. Well, she's clearly in pain. But it was her goal that put Chelsea ahead in the third minute of play. And from that moment on, it's been a dominant Chelsea display. And no wonder she gets a hug from her coach. And on comes Penilla Harder, twice European Footballer of the Year. Record signing at uh, around about 250 grand, they say. Kerr on to right and Harder was right up there with the play. She's missed the last six games, injured. Little, Mead. Back to Little, to the gears. Lerpoch no, can't catch her. Lovely long ball to the far post and well seen off by Erin Cuthbert. She's had some FA Cup final. You could see that that was the ball that was on from Kim Little and she executed it brilliantly. Erin Cuthbert checks her back shoulder, knows who's behind her, what's behind her, and a perfect interception from Erin Cuthbert and gets the hugs and the well dones from her friends. Great break, great break down that right-hand side between Beth Mead and Kim Little. Whatever she does in the game, she wants to do it to the best of her ability, Cuthbert. The cross will be easily dealt with by Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? If it's a tackle, if it's a pass, if it's a shot, she just wants to be the best she possibly can at every stage. And there's, there's no... She never drops off anything, and whether that's pressing a 10-yard ball, whether it's chasing back, it's 100% sweet. She's always concentrating. You never see lapses of concentration. She's been on it this season. Need something in the last 16 minutes just to get their game going. If it's a lucky bounce, if it's a deflection in, anything. In all honesty, they've been outclassed this afternoon in every department, midfield, in possession, out of possession. Chelsea won't say it after the game because they'll be too diplomatic, but this is a statement because of what happened in the opening WSL game, I think. And they felt uh, not so annoyed about what happened. They were rocked on that day. Is not Here's Harder, sorry, Rachel, curse to the right-hand side, Harder. Good long run by the substitute, Harder's first impact in the final. Easy save in the end at the near post by Zinsberger. And you bring off Frank Kirby and you bring on Penella Harder, Ballon d'Or winner. Lovely long run, no finish. Zinsberger, Arsenal's best player on the day. Harder, by the way, six goals a season in eight games because of that injury. She's been restricted, she scored three in the last three. Couple against Arsenal last February. Kirby and Kerr, the goal scorers for Chelsea. You've heard it before, and you'll hear it again. And Chelsea come again, Iwabuchi caught in possession. And he flicked it one side a little, couldn't get the other. Here's Mead. Looks for Miedemar. I don't think anyone could fault Beth Mead's endeavours today, uh, commitment, but it just hasn't happened for us. Ericsson here, Ingle. Never looks ruffled. Hoping will always looks calm. She reads the game so well. She's been around and playing in that position for such a long time. Arnhem's giving it away. Off go Chelsea again. Kerr flag has stayed down. Sam Kerr for Chelsea. Little dink. What a goal! What a goal to seal the FA Cup victory. Outstanding finish by an outstanding goal scorer. Chelsea have dominated the FA Cup final of 2021. They scored early, they should have had five by half-time, they now have three. Arsenal have been outclassed and beaten out of sight. Sublime finish from Sam Kerr there, running full pelt and to have a presence of mind. She offside? No, on. no, onside, in the centre, I think it's Bubba Moy playing her on. But full pelt there and to be able to Dink it over. Zinsberger at full pace. She's got the angle which makes it more difficult to slide it across the goalkeeper or go near post. So she thinks, well, why don't I just do this? And this is why she's one of the world's best. Just dips under the bar. 
<laughs> Everyone in a blue shirt enjoyed that. Oh, look at that reaction too. She knows it's theirs now. And I think the dramatic goal celebration was also a little bit of a statement. Because, uh, no uh, knee slide? <laughs> yeah. well, here's Little. Erickson, this will hurt him Little. Need. Near post went for it, took a deflection, did it? Corner ball. The uh, Arsenal jogging in now, looking rather deflated. Well, they had two efforts on goal, both of them off target. I don't know if they've hit the target yet. Common the Berger making a save of no. Away by Millie Bright, who hasn't made a single error in the game. And going to meet it was Jess Carter, a transformation in her career over the last 12 months. Nikita Paris is going to come on. For Arsenal. Career back in England from Lyon hasn't really got going at Arsenal. It's tough, isn't it, when Arsenal have been in such phenomenal form in the Women's Super League. The likes of Beth Mead ahead of her. She has played 18 games this season, but she's had cameo roles. She'll replace Marlon while they're really going for it now. They have no protection really in midfield. All forward looking players. If they're, if they're as sloppy in possession as his side has been in the last 11 minutes, Chelsea could go on and get a couple more. Can Arsenal get something of a consolation? Right stepped in. What? Paris with the slide challenge. Mistimed it with her first challenge. going to get a card. Yeah, it was a, a loose challenge from Paris. She intentionally injured her, but just not quite on, up to the pace of it. She should just come on. I think Paris has gone in a, in a pretty central role, her and Viv Miedemar going up top together. As you mentioned, Caitlin Ford, Beth, Beth Mead, she just goes over the top. She doesn't. She intends to slide and catch the ball, but she doesn't really catch the player. And I hope. Right into okay. right in. Didn't look a very pleasant challenge. Maybe it looked worse than it was, but anyway, it's a yellow card. I was at Everton with Nikita Paris for a long time and been on the receiving end on a number of those challenges in training. She's a feisty player. I think it's going to come on for a role in the cup final. There's a chance for Hunter again. On the shoulder of Wooden Moy, who got just a touch on it. Chelsea have just not given up on anything. They've chased down every ball. And they look for Kerr at the far post on a hat-trick now. They've not made anything easy for us at the back. Every time Wooden Moy's in possession, Jen beat you before she came off, but look at this sumptuous finish. If you think that a couple of missed chances from Sam Kerr knocks her confidence, then you can think again, you can see that finish, and you know that she is as resilient as a player as you can get. Harder looks for her again, and in came Fleming, I think it was, to lift it over the bar. Got there, the Canadian, scored in the Olympic final. Another Chelsea player who's had to wait quite a long time, really, for to have any sort of run of starts for Chelsea. But as all of these players know in the match day squad, making that match day squad and keeping them happy, Emma Hayes has done an absolutely brilliant job of that. Now, a chance here for Nikita Paris running with Carter. He's had a super final, super season through this campaign, scored against London City. Little. 
Obviously going to make a raft of substitutions, Beth England. G is getting ready to go on, G so young. Okay, what a player to bring off the bench again. Strength and depth, Iwabuchi, Mead, lanced away again by Jess Carter. This is the other side of what Chelsea have done so well, not just today, but why they are one of Europe's best teams. Is they defend so, so well. Ericsson Mielder's actually not in the matchday squad today, but she will be another key player, I'm sure. Just back from long-term injury. Let's have a look for Paris. Here's Ingle. Nikita Paris needs a good run of games and goals in the Arsenal starting lineup with those European finals coming up next summer. No great movement up front for Arsenal, dispirited. Six minutes to go, Ruben Moy might be about to be substituted. Sorensen's about to come on, defender. Stamped away by Eriksson, Ingle looks to set Kerr away. Ruben Moy got back at it, but it's still Kerr, but the flag goes up. Tireless running from Sam Kerr. We're in the 85th minute now, and from the opening few seconds, see that was a game plan. Now an opportunity for Arsenal forward. Little pullback looking for Paris. I think it's going to come on for Chelsea anyway. G is over there as well. In comes across looking for Miedemar. She's had to feed off scraps the word I was thinking of as well exactly that nothing clear cut for Arsenal at all in this whole afternoon well the third substitute there is Drew Spence that's great to see her playing in the cup final Sam Kerr all smiles all smiles two goals and Beth England comes on but uh, terrific to see Drew Spence who's Chelsea's longest serving player to get a chance in the cup final. She replaces Leopold, so steady in that midfield with Ing Ingle and made a real impact on the game. And Spence will come on as well for Guru Wrighton. It's Drew Spence, it's her fifth FA Cup final. Drew Spence comes on for Gura Wrighton. I think uh, it's going to be a defensive change for Arsenal. What do you make of those changes for Chelsea? Well, the game's done, simple as that. And these, they are three long-time servants of Chelsea. G has been here pretty much since Emma Hayes has been here. Drew Spence, I think, precedes Emma Hayes even, has been around for such a long time at Chelsea. And Beth England has earned her way back uh, to Chelsea with loan spells out to Liverpool, loan spells out to elsewhere, proven herself, lifted her confidence and has become a, a player who scored critical goals for Chelsea. So as much as it's only five minutes, it's a representative of how important those three players particularly are to Chelsea Football Club. Beth England, a couple against Latvia for England the other day. They all scored against Latvia, didn't they, really? Let's be honest. Less said the better about that. Yeah. And I think the England coach is very pragmatic about it as well. Afterwards, she was saying, you know, we need more competitive games than this. We, see, we do see it in men's football, don't we? Sometimes huge nations, population wise, against minnows, as it were. Bucci beaten in the air by Ingle. Two and a half minutes to go. Make sure you've got to pick your man of the uh, your player of the match, I should say. As Arsenal look to feed Ford. You have to name the Vitality player of the match in a minute. There's a hefty challenge in there on uh, Drew Spence. Oh, 
McCabe left her foot in there and she's already on a yellow card. That was high. No, that's fine. That was not worthy of your second yellow. I think the referee overall has let the game flow pretty well. To Beth England. Fleming. No way back now for Arsenal with 90 seconds plus stoppage time. Cuthbert uh, standing on that right hand side for Chelsea. Millie Bright, flawless today. Now that shows how Millie Bright, I think, has developed as a player. She tried to do something there that she wouldn't have done a couple of years ago. Who's your uh, player of the match, Rachel? Well, it could have been a whole host of players from Chelsea, but I'm going to go with double goal scorer Sam Kerr for today. She's been well helped by Frank Kirby, and I think Aaron Cuthbert has been sensational as well for Chelsea. But Sam Kerr with two critical goals, the beauty of that third. And she's the player of the match. What a finish this was. I mean, Tate uses a pace, gets at Catley, but then to be able to put the brakes on mentally and execute that, she enjoyed that as much as we did. And Chelsea looked to put Beth England through the middle, and out comes Zinsberger. She can hold her head up high, the Arsenal goalkeeper, but so many of them will be so bitterly disappointed. They have just been outclassed today, Jonathan. And as we go into stoppage time, what impact will have this, this have on the WSL? Superstar looking on there, unfit at the moment, Tobin Heath, but... Uh, well, it's neck and neck, isn't it, currently at WSL? I think Arsenal had the edge mentally going into this game, you would have thought, but... What certainly was the repercussions of that opening match, big stage, you know, on TV, in front of a, a large crowd at Arsenal and being beaten in the manner that they were beaten. Chelsea carved open at the back. Emma Hayes was adamant, was desperate to ensure that that did not happen today. And what a difference Leah Williamson would have had there up until the new year with a hamstring injury and Tobin Heath, world class. But they got off to the worst possible start. They looked vulnerable from the outset, didn't they? Uh, with the prowess that Chelsea have in their, their forward players, you cannot afford to have anything other than a watertight and flawless game at the back. And Arsenal had neither of those from the beginning. Yeah, if Leo Williamson had been in place, it would have been a more settled back line. But they just didn't learn from the mistakes either, Arsenal. Here's Spence. How can she pull it back from that position? Little dink by Fleming. Comes all the way through. Ericsson, the captain. G. Trying to glide beyond a boy Sorensen. Still has it. Just cart up and all the way through. If Emma Hayes' team runs out with a clean sheet here, she will, you know, that will is dotting the I's and crossing the T's on a magnificent performance for Chelsea today. They have executed everything that Emma Hayes and her backroom staff will have wanted to have implemented and executed on the biggest stage in the women's domestic football calendar. Well, Chelsea have not conceded a goal in 683 minutes of football. Arsenal need three in two minutes. It's not going to happen, but they're looking here for consolation. Miedemar onside, and a lovely effort to get back at her by Jeff, Jess Carter. Lovely challenge by Jess Carter to get back at her. Matched, didn't she? Matched Miedemar for pace, Jess Carter. She's been very, very athletic since, I, as you mentioned, playing for Birmingham as a 16-year-old, thrown at the deep end in some degree. She's matured as an athlete, as a player. She reads the game. Given responsibility at the centre of that three, just shows what an experienced head she has on her. In comes the corner kick. Iwabuchi. Out by Millie Bright. Bright there again to thwart Paris. Decent ball into the penalty area. Here's Beth Mead. It's on the 
Arsenal players will be devastated by this. And so many Chelsea players, it will be not really mission revenge for that league defeat at the start of the season, but players like Carter, she was beaten here for Birmingham City in the cup final of 2017 against Manchester City. I think Emma Hayes was quickly ready, and Georgia Fox, a young Chelsea player who's made a WSL debut, come on here at Wembley. I mean, this is what dreams are made of as a young footballer now, male or female, you can dream, and it's a reality that you can play at Wembley, you can be a professional footballer. What a moment this is for particularly young players. Oh, Sophie Ingle has had a terrific final for Chelsea, and... Uh... She makes way, Annick Canoan coming on. Who's a defender and a, a recent signing from PSV Eindhoven. Missed the last four games with a muscle injury. Had in the Olympics in the summer. She spends battling on. It's got to be all of us. Keeps asking Emma Hayes, how long left for official? How long left? She's been able to rest players late on in this game with future games in mind. Arsenal have to pick themselves up very quickly. Chelsea have won the 2021 Vitality FA Cup final. They have beaten Arsenal. They have beaten them out of sight. From the moment Frank Kirby scored in the opening minutes, Kerr cemented the victory after they'd squandered chances and Zinsberger had made splendid saves. But Kerr's sumptuous second and Chelsea's third wrapped up an emphatic victory, Rachel. It was a blue day today. Emma Hayes out -tactic uh, tactically outsmarted Jonas Edeval. Tactically, technically, everything about the performance was sublime from Chelsea. Emma Hayes and the backroom staff should be very, very proud of the players. Every single one of them that took part that were here today from a Chelsea perspective it was almost perfection. Arsenal, it just was not their day. Everything that they tried to do, any runs they tried to get going, any passages of play, Chelsea just snuffed them out. Well, a great victory. She can, she can afford to rest players with the Juventus in mind. And it's a great victory for the Chelsea coach. It's a great victory for Emma Hayes. It's a great victory for Chelsea. And they have emphatically beaten Arsenal in this cup final by three goals to them. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Rachel. We will be back with you shortly for the presentations. You can see Emma Hayes there congratulating the Arsenal team and their backroom staff. Jordan Nobbs there giving her a hug. And I'm sure those two also uh, go back away when she was coaching at Arsenal, Alex. But Personally, for Emma Hayes, this feels like another huge moment in her career because it's wrestling that kind of dominance off Arsenal in this competition. And once again, Gabby, being able to produce again, time and time again, when it absolutely matters. And from Chelsea, from the first moment in this kickoff, they was absolutely a class apart and embarrassed Arsenal today. And those celebrations are well deserved. I think when people talk about winning mentality, I think it's so easy to say and I think what this Chelsea team have demonstrated certainly in the last couple of seasons is that they live and breathe this winning mentality and you can see that with a group of players today I think as you mentioned Alex from the beginning of the game to the to the very end they were professional in their performance they dominated the game and they stayed in control they came out with such intensity and this high press this tempo and it rattled Arsenal and it seemed to completely throw their game plan out I and mean, that is that is, as a coach, exactly what you want to achieve. But for Arsenal then to not get the, the handle on the game and not get themselves back into it, no shots on for Arsenal today. You had Arsenal players were rattled from the start and that's where you can see the difference between players because you have players that go into your shell or you have players that step up in those moments. And too many of these Arsenal players were totally rattled and never recovered from that. Yeah, I think that's Chelsea dominance though, Alex. I think, you know, you speak about it. These Chelsea players... 
more of these Chelsea players have been there and done it before in terms of winning and being in big games. There's not enough of those Arsenal players that have been in big games over the last few years. Yes, they won the league two years ago, but in terms of actually winning something, I can't remember the last time this group of players did that. So they're building back. They've started really well in the WSL, but today it just shows the gap between Chelsea and Arsenal at the moment. Yeah, Jonas Eidevel there is speaking to a crestfallen group of women who have come here with high expectations. They're leading the league. They're the team that people are trying to catch. They're a team of superstars as well. But he hasn't had as much time to imprint his identity onto this, his team. And this will make him think about what is needed to take them onto that next level. He wants to be competing at the very top level in Europe, never mind in England. There's been two big lessons already for this Arsenal team this season. When they played Barcelona in the Champions League and now in a cup final. And what me and Farah spoke about at half time is the difference between players being able to deliver when it matters in a final, in a Champions League. Well, I'll tell you who did deliver and that was Sam Kerr. And the player of the match is with Joe Curry. Sam, can you hear me right? Lovely. Well, Sam, I can see you looking around, just taking this all in. We know you're a player that loves to perform on the big platforms. Just sum up how special today is. Yeah, I mean, I think we deserved it. I think we played really well. I think we've been playing well the last few weeks. And um, we kind of went in as underdogs, so we had a point to prove. And yeah, we're, we're buzzing. The first half, it, it looked like the ball just wouldn't go in the back of the net for you. But second half, you got two. Second goal in particular, have you ever had a cooler finish than that second goal? Uh, yeah, like we said, it wouldn't go in, but we knew it was coming. It could have been 4 5 nil in the first half, but they defended well, and um, we knew that if we keep pushing, um, at some point they'll go in, and they did. And Yeah, I mean, I'm paid to score goals, but our defence was amazing. It was a team effort, and yeah, I can't wait to party. Well, uh, the Chelsea fans in the stadium have been epic today, but for your friends and family watching back home, what's your message for them? Uh, yeah, I love you guys. I wish you could be here. These are the moments as a player that you play and wish your family was here, but they're probably all home. My girlfriend's here. That's why I have to put on a show, but yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, look, Sam, massive congratulations on the win. You are the player of the match. Enjoy your champagne. Try not to drink it all at once. I'll be going down a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> We will be looking back at that incredible third goal again. We can't decide whether it's a Penenka or a Penenki because it's scored by a woman. I quite like to kind of feminise it. And, uh, and whatever it was, it was a moment of, of sheer brilliance and beauty. And that's what she is capable of. And it's so great. You know, remember back last year uh, when we saw her here and she was fairly new to the whole kind of women's uh, WSL in, in England. And she just hadn't found her stride yet. And boy, has she found her stride now. The absolute quality, Farah, that she showed today and the confidence that she's showing to able to score that third goal and show her ability, how she did. She deserves that champagne. She deserves the party. But Emma Hayes will be reminding her she's got Champions League midweek. Yeah, they've got a big game in the midweek against Juventus. But, you know, they've got to enjoy moments like this. You know, not often you go to Wembley and win a cup final. Look, we mentioned Sam Kerr. I think first half she had plenty of chances. And a player lacking confidence wouldn't have come out in the second half and delivered what she did. Two fantastic goals and arguably two goals that were the hardest to take out of all of them. Well, nine goals in the last five for Sam Kerr shows why she's third in the Ballon d'Or last week. She is a true global superstar. But she said it herself, didn't she? This was a team effort. Defensively, shutting out Arsenal is also going to give Emma Hayes a lot of joy. Yeah, I, I, I actually think the clean sheet will please Emma more than anything. You know, conceding three goals in that opening game against Arsenal, Emma wanted to prove a point today. And I think her Chelsea team did that. You've seen the resilience, you've seen the way that they dug in and literally reduced Arsenal to zero shots at goal. Yeah, it's their seventh consecutive clean sheet. And I think Chelsea were just so efficient in everything they did. Every single player winning second balls, hunting impacts and playing for each other. 683 minutes without conceding a goal. Emma Hayes is getting it right at both ends of the pitch. Her team are delivering, as she says, every time they train, she sees them step up a gear and she's thrilled with what she's seeing with this special group of players. She's recruited brilliantly. Vanilla Harder is a player who's brought in that wolf experience she's brought in winning in Europe into this squad and when you have winners around you like that it elevates your game doesn't it yeah most definitely and, I, and, and and that is what I've noticed with this Chelsea team definitely with the players they brought in with that winning mentality you've certainly seen a shift especially in the English players in the mentality of the English players within this Chelsea team you've certainly like Jess Carter for example she's one of those that certainly this season has been fantastic at the heart of Chelsea defense so it's fantastic that you can bring players in of that caliber
Yeah, and meanwhile, the Arsenal players have come off the pitch. They're at the side of the pitch now, waiting, of course, for the presentation of their losers' medals. And this will this will send a few little kind of shockwaves through that club, won't it? And through the through the team, because I think they're expected to compete a lot closer today. Yeah, coming into this uh, game, first v second, close in every single stats, goal scoring, form. But this is it. You need to deliver. I know I keep saying it, but deliver when it matters. Farah, you've been in changes, both of us, when you look around and you know when some players are nervous and going to make those mistakes and how you can recover from that. But like we said, this is a big lesson for this Arsenal team. They need to regroup and go again. Well, just below us here in the West Stand is where the Chelsea fans have stayed. Of course, the Arsenal fans are starting to leave. But... The blue flags are flying, the Chelsea fans are having their song played and they are loving this moment. The third FA Cup for Chelsea on this, the 50th anniversary of the ban in women's football being lifted. A seminal day, an important day that's been marked by the FA with captains from those winning sides through the years being invited today. And in a moment we will see Chelsea go up and receive their trophy, receive their medals. And it will feel today very special indeed. Wembley is now the home for the Women's FA Cup and the crowds come, you know, build it and they'll come, Alex, and they have. Because they know it's always been such a showpiece game. And the more women's football is, yes, the commercial deals, on TV, people were following stories of a Beth Mead, a Sam Kerr. You invest in these. And now to see Wembley with the crowd that it has cheering on the Chelsea team, the Arsenal team, it does. It feels like such a special occasion. Yeah, an unbelievable occasion. I think the fans have played their part today. We've had the Chelsea fans just sat below us. And it's been fantastic to see the blue flags flying. Arsenal played their part early on in the game in terms of the fans, but Chelsea had the better of the, of the two. Well, Beth Mead's had a tremendous season so far. She looks distraught, though, because she's been behaving like a winner all season. She will expect to come away today with more than a loser's medal and uh, um, a minor setback for somebody who's on a real upward curve at the moment. She will come again. Today, though, is blue. It belongs to Chelsea. So let's hand you back to Jonathan Pearce for the presentation. Thanks, Gabby. She didn't just look distraught. She looked absolutely furious, Beth Mead, for me, as she moved through. And that's a crumb of comfort for Arsenal, that he, she is so furious with this performance. And you could see shots of Zinsberger as well talking before this uh, presentation where they'll get losers' medals instead of the winners they crave. She was furious as well. And the manager spoke to them at length in that huddle. And they will have to come back very quickly. Next up, the European champions in the Champions League, Barcelona. And uh, they've already lost to them once this season. Heavy defeat. But this, in the manner of defeat, was more worrying, I think, for Arsenal Football Club, Rachel. Yeah, it seemed almost a disbelief on the face, didn't there, of Beth Mead, of, of a number of players, as to how did we just get absolutely, how was it so one-sided? And a quick turnaround for them. Emma Hayes comes up to lift another winner's medal. Three FA Cups for Chelsea. Beth England, a substitute, comes up. Sophie Ingle played such a huge role throughout the season. Jess Carter has when switched to that middle of the centre-back trio she is itself Fran Kirby got the final off to a goal scoring start in the third minute Sam Kerr with her two goals as a young girl she said she didn't like soccer her family were Aussie rules players she comes from a great sporting background granddad was a featherweight boxer uncle was a jockey dad and uncles played Aussie rules she played it until she turned to football and became a global superstar and a star of this FA Cup final. And Millie Bright collects her medals, the substitutes move on through, and uh, is Millie Bright picking up her medal. And the captain comes last, Magdalena Eriksson. I'll tell you what, she had more difficulty getting the medal out of the box than she did creating with Chelsea in the Arsenal box today. It's another success for Magdalena Eriksson. Another title for Chelsea. Treble winners in 2021. The celebrations, the pyrotechnics, the glitter. The hands are on the silver trophy. The colour is blue. The winners of the FA Cup in 2021. Sam Kerr, the player of the match.
the winners, deservedly so, emphatically so, Chelsea. Thank you very much, Jonathan, and great scenes there as Chelsea party enjoying this, their third FA Cup, the investment that's gone into this cup. I mean, look, we saw a picture of you back in the day, Farah, when you were a 14-year-old in your big oversized men's kit. And they, you know, they have, Chelsea have looked down the club, haven't they, and said, right, we've got to invest in the youth, we've got to put money in grassroots, as well as bringing in international stars. We want these young players to come right through. Yeah, most definitely. Look, they've really invested, and this is what investment does to a team. You know, it's taken Emma 10 years for this team to become a winning team, and she speaks about that openly, how long it's taken her to get these players to perform the way in which she does. You know, it's my dream as a kid to put that Chelsea shirt on and come to Wembley and win an FA Cup. But to come here as a fan today, now I'm no longer playing, and support this Chelsea team and watch them win, it's been fantastic. Let's have a look back at the goals then, because... Sam Kerr hit the bar in the first half. It, she, she had chances galore, didn't she? Uh, but as you said, when you're as confident as she is, you know it's going to come good for you. And this was 2-0. Yeah, this is a fantastic finish. Look, for somebody that's missed so many chances... Sorry, that was 3-0. This is the third goal. They have the audacity to dink the keeper from just inside the box. Just shows the quality of the player. That's why they pay big money for big players, because you get these moments in game. This is fantastic for any player at any level. It's the keeper's left in no man's land. Yeah, absolutely exquisite. To be able to see the keeper off her line and have the confidence to do that. And yes, Emma Hayes, you do deserve to be celebrating like that because it's a top quality finish. Can we call it Penenka? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, Gabby. I'm, I'm, even though it hurts me because Arsenal lost, Chelsea deserves every single And slightly out of order. Today. Let's do 2 0 now. Okay. <laughs> a look at when she made it 2-0 once yeah. again it was them hunting in packs trying to win the ball back and once you do win the ball back let's exploit this arsenal team and get in behind them and be direct yes the defending has been questionable all day from arsenal but once again that quality to come inside and finish it as calmly and as cool as she does yeah fantastic we spoke in the first half how willing a runner this sam kerr was and how she kept stretching this arsenal back line with the pace that she had she shapes up and she gets Ruben Moy in, in an awful position. And the keepers obviously gamble that she's going to take it across goal and she just cut it back at the near post. It's a fantastic finish. And as I mentioned, both of her goals in this half were probably the harder out of all the chances that she had. They work so well together, don't they, Kirby and Kerr? They have had uh, between them nine goals. Uh, Chelsea's last nine goals come from them, six and three. And, you know, that... that kind of synergy, that partnership. It takes time, but when it works, it's beautiful. And Kirby herself has, has been through her own trials and tribulations, and to see them gelling like this is, uh, well, it's a beautiful thing for Chelsea fans. It's that link-up play and that knowing where your other partner is going to be without even thinking, or if your partner's closing down, you know she's doing the work to help me get on the ball and get a goal. And their partnership, both between them, is just beautiful to carry on for us to watch. OK. No, I was going to say what good players do. They, they're able to read each other's movements and I think Sam Kirby and, and uh, Sam, sorry, Kerr. Sam Kerr. Sam Kerr. Sam Kerr would be a great player. <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> Between the two of them, I think in terms of their connection, how they built that, it's beautiful to watch. And, and, and look, you saw today, both of them getting on the score sheet. I'm sure they have both benefited from the leadership and managerial qualities of their boss, Emma Hayes, who is now with Joe Curry. Well, Emma, wow, you've done it again. You absolutely sprang out of the blocks tonight. Was that always the plan, to go hard out? I thought we got it spot on. I thought we predicted what they were going to do and they did what we thought they were going to do. Um, we've painted Wembley blue. It's certainly a Chelsea day today and our performance was absolutely superb. You spoke pretty much about the experience you had in the squad. Do you think that was part of the difference today, the fact you've got those players that have played in so many big matches like this before? Yeah, I think so. And, and, and the front two 
were out of this world. I said to Fran, I think it's the best game I've ever seen them play for Chelsea and Sam, her confidence is growing. But everybody played their part. Everybody did the job we asked them to do and we thoroughly deserve to be winners. But look, it's taken its time to happen, but you have now finally completed the treble from last season. How special is this Chelsea team? Yeah, I mean, to think we're treble winners, that's an amazing achievement. It really is. It's, you, you can't ask for any more from the players. I'm, I'm extremely proud of them, the staff, the club. You know, we built this team over a long period of time and today I think we showed why we are champions. Well, look, you've got Juventus on Wednesday. I think Sam Kerr's already started the party, to be honest, but how much are you going to let them celebrate tonight? Zero chance of celebration. The bus is leaving from here. They're going home. They know the deal. We need to win Wednesday. Well, good luck getting them on the bus. Well done again, Emma. Thanks. Cheers. Well, Sam Kerr didn't get that message, did she? She's got very different ideas. I think she's, she's going to have to take that champagne and sneak off somewhere else That's with the it only drink she's having. Emma's in her ear. <laughs> and let's go back to the first half, where there were chances galore for Chelsea, but it was, of course, Frank Kirby who put the only goal of that first half away. This sums up their whole game, being direct and forcing into Arsenal mistakes and running into areas that defenders don't want to go. We're going to hustle them and actually it's not the first ball, we're going to pick up the second ball and once again be direct. And like Emma just said, when you've got Fran Kirby and Sam Kerr in your side, you know that they're going to put the ball in the back of the net the way they do in these positions. Yeah, I think you see from the starts, the possession starts, yes, Arsenal you know, dominated the possession, but, but Chelsea were prepared to go direct. And we haven't seen that often from this Chelsea team this year, but they've obviously identified a weakness at Arsenal. You know, losing Leah Williamson at the back, I think they were very disjointed. And with Sam Kerr, as I mentioned, running all day long, those long balls really did cause Arsenal a problem. OK, let's hear from Fran Kirby. She's with Joe. Well, Fran, that smile tells the story. Just how special was that? It was amazing. It was, you know, everything that we could have asked for coming into the game. Everyone was so calm before the game. You know, we, we approached it, like I said, in media before, like it's any other game. And I think you could see that in our first half performance, especially. So really, really happy with the end result, of course. You threw the absolute kitchen sink at them from the get go. But was it a surprise to you to score so early on? Yeah, for sure. Obviously, you know, it, it helped a lot. It settled our nerves a lot going into the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, we didn't expect to blow them away as much as we did in the first half. I think they had a little bit of momentum in the first half as well, but I think for us, we were probably more disappointed going in, you know, only 1-0. We felt we could have had a few more goals if we had taken our chances. Um, but yeah, I think overall we're really happy and we've painted Wembley blue, so that's the most amazing thing. You've been through so much and you've also achieved so much in your career. Where does today sit amongst everything else? Oh, it's amazing. For me, you know, Winning trophies is, is what I came to this club to do and what I wanted to help this club do. So to win another one today, it's, it's so special. And for me, all the winning is on the same level. It doesn't matter what I'm winning. Um, I have the same end result and that's, that's to win. And just finally, you limped over to me. Millie Bright's got a, a cut on her forehead. How brutal was that trophy lift? <laughs> I know, we all just turned around and saw there was just blood coming out of her eyebrow. But yeah, I mean, it was... Yeah, you can't you can't describe how that how the emotions feel in, in that moment and adrenaline gets you through a lot, you know. Obviously I came over limping during the game, um, but you know I knew I had to keep going for the next few minutes to allow us to get warm. But yeah, I mean I think our celebrations are gonna be a bit interesting on the bus on the way back now. I'll let you go and enjoy the celebrations, but do be careful. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. No wonder Emma Hayes wants to get them on the bus. Millie Bright there, I mean, of all the injuries to pick up, but Wembley, that wasn't the one she was... She, won't, she, won't, tough. she won't have a headache from the champagne, it's from the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> all gets a little bit out of hand there, but it's so brilliant to see them enjoying it, loving it, because let's not forget, this journey started 455 days ago, because this is the 2021 delayed FA Cup final. Another one's coming along in May the 2022. You know, it's been a protracted, difficult, obviously interrupted because of COVID, um, but Chelsea have kept their eye on the prize. Let's have a little look at Arsenal and where things got a bit sloppy for them, the mistakes they made today, Alex. Too many, Gabby, from the start, individual errors, giving the ball away, panicking. And look, when you give players at any level time on the ball, they can look world class. When you get in their face, when you hustle them and make them make mistakes, this is when Arsenal started panicking. And this happened throughout the whole game. And this is what they have to go back and analyse to just pass the ball off the pitch and not being able to make a five-yard pass and allowing players the amount of space that they do to get shots off like this. This is when we're talking about players going in their shell at this level. Yeah, I mean, this was certainly not an Arsenal team that we, we, we've come to see over the, over the years. And, 
for me, they needed somebody in that Arsenal team today to take control. I don't think anybody stood up to that. I think Beth Mead had a, a good, good, good game if I was to pick one out of the 11. But I think they needed somebody to just put their foot on the ball and start to take control. They kept playing off one touch. And when you play off one touch against a high pressing team, things like this happen. OK, well, let's hear the thoughts then of Jonas Eideville, the Arsenal manager with Joe. Jonas, commiserations. That was a, a tough old afternoon for you. For you, where did it go wrong today? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a combination of Chelsea. It's obviously a very good football team when they get uh, time and space uh, to, to play on the final third. And, and we commit way too many mistakes today as a team. So, of course, we don't feel good now. It's a bad performance from, uh, from us and uh, something we need to learn from. But uh, now, right at the moment, it, it's not a good feeling. Was the occasion perhaps too big for some of the players or were you just outplayed by Chelsea? I think we can perform bet better, much better than we did uh, than we did today. Of course, there can be a number of reasons why we don't uh, perform that well, and uh, well, that will be my job to to find them and to be able to correct them in the future. You've got the small matter of hosting Barcelona in the Champions League this week. Your players aren't going to have long to grieve this defeat and move on from it, are they? Uh, no, we, we need to look forward. We, we need to do that either when we, when we win or when we lose. We need to go forward and we need to learn and we need to do things better. Uh, so that's the same process as always. Thanks for speaking to us, Jonas. Thanks. Well, we've seen his knee slides down the touchline when he's obviously got himself a win. But today that was a very sober and uh, very disappointed Jonas Eideville. You know, in the semi-final against Brighton, he was thrilled to be getting to Wembley in his first season. There'll be other chances, I'm sure, but he's going to demand a lot more of this team in the future. You can hear almost like the disappointment and that the hurt that he actually feels when you're listening to him talk there, because he's correct. It's too many individual errors throughout the game that then kind of pass around the team, everyone making slow sloppy mistakes but they are they're going to have to pick themselves up again because Barcelona is a huge game midweek and they're going to have to put in a 100% better performance and not be embarrassed like they did what they emotionally were that's tough isn't it physically obviously there's the, what's happened on the pitch to come back from emotionally the disappointment because the build up to this is massive and then to collect yourself afterwards takes a, a big effort yeah, you take yourself on such a high and then, and then to, to, to lose the game in the manner in which they did today, I think it's really hard to take. They've got a few days now to recover, but they're going to have to recover because they're going up against another top team, probably the, arguably the best team in Europe. So they certainly have to bounce back, bounce back. A positive I think they can take from it is that there was lots of individual errors. So if they can correct that, Arsenal aren't a bad team. They're a very good team. So I think they, they stand a chance against Barcelona at home as well on Wednesday. And it'd be interesting to see how this affects their journey in the WSL, makes them even hungrier, you'd think, for that success because obviously they lead the way at the moment. Uh, but let's remind you of more sport coming up on the BBC. You can watch highlights from all the weekend's Premier League games on Match of the Day 2 tonight on BBC One at 10.30. And Match of the Day FA Cup highlights from the men's second round are on BBC Four tonight at 7 o'clock, repeated on BBC One at 11.45. On BBC iPlayer, you can watch the documentary Robbie Savage making Macclesfield. And the WSL returns next weekend. Our live match is Brighton against Manchester United on BBC Two at 12.15. I'll be there for that one. Looking forward to it. Here, though, uh, we've seen a fantastic performance from Chelsea. If you're a Chelsea fan, you're the Chelsea manager in the club in Chelsea. Well, Farrow, we know, is. You know, that is exactly the way you want your team to come out and attack the final. I think we all expected it to be a little bit closer, actually, in the build-up, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, in a build-up, certainly, as we mentioned, the former Arsenal have come into the game in. We expected a tighter game, you know, two teams at the very top of their, their game in WSL. But, you know, Chelsea dominated. They stayed in control right from the off. And I think, you know, the result was deserved. Well, why are you trying to hide your smile for, Fala? Go with it. I'm going to go home and take my Arsenal socks off and my red coat off, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, thank you so, so much. As always, brilliant to have your company and enjoy this afternoon. And what a golden afternoon, the golden anniversary of the Women's FA Cup. And what a way to mark it with a performance like that from Chelsea. It feels like three is the magic number today because that completes a 2021 treble for Emma Hayes's Chelsea. Three goals scored today by of course the magnificent Kirby and Kerr and I think that's all remaining today is for me to say goodbye from us three hey, so I we'll like see it. you next time we enjoyed that <laughs> bye bye thanks for watching we've come a long long way together through the hard times and the good it's a game between the top two teams in the land
Chelsea on the attack. Here's Kirby through, and Kirby scores. And it's in the third minute of the game, and Chelsea are ahead. Kirby Romford's the goalkeeper, Chelsea are 2 0 up, they have one hand on the cup. Sam Kerr for Chelsea, little dink, what a goal, what a goal to seal the FA Cup victory.